Hello everyone and welcome. Oh my goodness, I am so pixelated. We are working on it and we are gonna try to fix this. I am not pixelated for myself. I'm very clean, I'm sharp, the internet works fine, but there seem to be some issues with our vmix call. But hopefully you guys can at least see me, or at least hear me. And you can definitely see Nanonoko. Nano, you jinxed us! The other week you said we were inconsistent. And I'm like, mate, it's not that bad. And then obviously the following week the servers go down. This is really all your fault. Yeah, it is all my fault. But I'm here, and uh, you're here. You, yes, you're a little pixelated. You seem like you've got the busto internet or whatever, but uh, it's okay. As long as we can both still talk to each other, as long as we can still see pocket fours and pocket fives make sets and um, some sick plays, I think we're still going to have a good time, Roddy. We are going to have a good time. I've really missed it. And I was like, you know, yes, it's been a bit inconsistent, but it's really not been that bad. I technically only missed one week because I was in Sweden. But yeah, then we had a two week, uh, basically a bigger edition of the high roller week or something along those lines. And I was like, okay, but now we're back for real, right? And then we weren't back. But the good news is that despite the fact that the WSOP is going on currently in Vegas, we will still be here each and every single Tuesday. We actually had a really big field last uh, Sunday, 170 entries. We'll talk about that soon. For now, let's get this pixelated webcam off the screen and take a look at the nine players that have made it to our final table of week 14 of season two when it comes to the high roller super millions. We've got a pretty fun table, I think. Nana, are you excited? I agree. I'm excited because of who's at the very bottom. It's Nicholas Este. He's oh. going to be there, but we'll take a look at that. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at. Oh, we can take a look at the, the betting, right? The final table betting. Yeah, there we mm -hmm. go. There we go. I feel like I'm. Hey, you don't look as pixelated less... when the box is smaller. I like it. <laughs> I know. And it looks uh, actually good. Let's talk about our pick of the weeks first, then, as this is our final uh, table lineup tonight. I think we have a couple of very familiar faces in there. You said you're mostly excited because of the dude who comes in at the bottom. Doesn't have too many chippies, but we know that doesn't mean a whole lot. Nicholas is dead. Even though we are gone for a week, it feels like whenever we come back, Nicholas is dead. is like, don't worry, guys. I'll tag along for the ride. If you guys are back, I'm back, back to the table. And you picked him, Nano. Yeah, I mean, like, remember last week, uh, Nicholas, is, it was not, la not la well, last time we had this series, uh, Nicholas said made the final table and ended up shipping it, right? Like, because mm -hmm. he came in in eighth place or something, right? He ran like God. Um, the same thing is going to happen here today. Uh, he comes in in last place. And he's going to run like God. He can't lose an all-in. And he's just going to ship this tournament. It's unlikely. But he's such an amazing player. We didn't see him all of Season 2. And then when he showed up, he just came and shipped it. Um, just like a lot of the other big champions uh, that have won in Season 1 and Season 2. So, look. And Poker Shares knows it, right? Because look at the odds, man. This guy's 11.25 to 1, right? But Mr. DL above him has got more chips with 15 to 1. They're saying this guy's almost got the same odds as David Yan, your pick. But there's a 500k difference in chips. Like, the odds probably aren't that great, but this guy, if he always going to win every all-in, doesn't matter what the odds are, it's a guaranteed win. I'm actually even more shocked. Like, the odds, they make some sense to me, because A, they know people are going to bet on Nicholas instead, and B, obviously, the more money that gets placed on him, the odds will go down a bit. But the fact that the total bet is already over 11k for the guy who comes in <laughs> with the least amount of chippies, that has never happened before, actually. I am convinced... That in over 70 episodes that we have done together now, I, never has the most amount of money been bet on the guy with the least amount of chips. That's crazy. Uh, you guys can still get your final table bets in for the upcoming seven minutes. Uh, and I know, Nano, what you're going to ask me. What are my bets? I have no bets, mate. I've got a Dutch account now. And we don't have final table betting yet. So my only bets are going to be with you. But to be honest, I think tonight would have been hard anyway. I have no idea what I would have done. You probably would have thrown some money on Nicholas Estet, David Yen, and Juan Dominguez. That's what I'm going to guess. That sounds about right, though. I think Juan Dominguez and David Yen, yes. And then maybe I would have picked one of the three guys at the top. Maybe just Ducks, because you know that I have got a soft spot in my heart for those Finnish flags. And the Finnish guys have done very well for me in the past. There's no way I would bet on Nicholas Estet. How the hell is he going to win it again, coming in with 844,000 chips? Like, no. And with those odds as well, like, if it was just one, I'd be like, okay, that's respectable. You can absolutely throw a couple dollars at Nicholas. But 11.2 to 1, they make it seem like he comes in with 3 million chips. He's got 844,000 chips, Nano. 
Hey, don't forget that um, I picked them to win last week. I got points on our leaderboard, right? Um, yeah, just just saying. This guy, he's, he's going to make it happen. But, you know, David Yan. Talk about David Yan. Why'd you pick? Because of everything you just said. You picked Nicholas Estet last week. You got some points on the leaderboard. I was kind of confused about who I should go with in the first place. So I decided to go with David Yan because that is a player that plays to win it. He obviously will care about the pay jumps and whatnot, but we know that David Yan can win it. He goes deep in a lot of the final tables we watch him play. He is aggressive, but I don't feel like he has random blow-ups. And I need points on the board because you got super lucky with your Nicholas stat pick and you already picked Michael Adamo once before. So I was like, who can I pick that can realistically win it? And it's actually going to give me some points on the board. That's how I came to David Yan. Yeah, well, um, I do think he's a solid pick. Look, if Nicholas Estet wasn't in last place, I probably would tell people, you know, you got to bet on David Yan. Like, because, yeah, he comes in the bottom. They get better odds. He does play for the win. Like, he's not shy on reshoving, like, little pocket pairs and stuff like this on people. And, you know, a lot of the guy, other guys out there would, would just skip those spots. Um, but enough about our two picks. What about uh, Romashka? You see that? He's, he's two final tables for him uh, in season two already. Yeah. Like, I'm telling you, like, some guys disrespect him, I'm sure, right? But, like, he outperforms a lot of pros uh, in season one. He's already outperforming people in season two. And he, he's, he's a guy who, who plays pots. One day, it's going to work out. He's just going to ship it. Oh, my God. He's got 1.9 million ships. And the odds for Romashka to win are higher than for Nicholas Estet. That's just disrespectful and not okay, guys. Romashka is not just fun because he is the quickest player in the West, or I guess Russia kind of qualifies as the East, but uh, he's also not afraid. And I do feel that Romashka, every now and then he locks it up, but most of the times I feel like he can't find the keys to lock it up. And he will get involved and he will stay busy and he will try to take pots down. I always get a little excited. Like, if we can have Romashka at every final table for the rest of season two, I would sign right now if I could sign a contract anywhere because you know that he's gonna give us some fireworks yeah he's definitely he, he plays more pots uh, he's gonna flatten in, in position more he's gonna just you know play a little bit more connected hands right um, but he goes for he really just goes for it and you know like there's a lot of guys who don't play profession that reach our final tables and they just kind of fold their way to like fourth fifth or something like this but this guy he'll go guns blazing he's either going to get top two or three or he's going to get last place just his style um but yeah romashka great uh, great fun to watch uh other guys at this final table i think mark rodoya here in third place limitless was talking about him last time when he was on our show and he spoke pretty highly of him and um he did some pretty cool moves and uh sitting up there he, he usually plays the special one so he likes to play the bracelet events and stuff like this um, but here he is this week, too. Yeah, I think the entire top three, like names besides Ducks, I guess, that we have seen, that we are familiar with. But we don't see them as much as some of the other usual suspects in a tournament series. We've got two minutes, Nano, until final table betting closed. I feel like we've said absolutely nothing of value so far. As usual. So if someone is watching this right now and they need to make up their mind, who should they put their hundred dollars on if i give you a hundred bucks right now and don't say put it on nicholas and seth because that's a really stupid bet so what are you going to do with a hundred dollars then enough shit i was going to say that um how about fifty dollars on david yan and fifty dollars on nicholas and seth? does that work for you roddy because I'm, I'm i'm loving the bottom here today you know they got great odds they're great players they're gonna run it up that's what i'm thinking if i would have been able to do final table betting and i would have just limited myself at a hundred bucks I think I would have gone for 50 on David Yen, then maybe 40 on Ducks, and 10 on Romashka. Just as a little feel good, good luck Romashka, I'm in your <laughs> corner kind of bet. <laughs> nice, uh, okay, cool, I'll take it. Yeah, Juan Dominguez has won it, right? But I feel like he should have won it a few more times and he's actually won it, is that correct? Uh, He has not won it. I'm pretty sure he's reached our final table a lot. I mean, we'll find out in the final table profile soon, but like he keeps getting mm -hmm. like third, fourth and fifth. Uh, I don't think he's even been heads up before. 
That's wild. I know that I've bet on him a lot many times in the past, and I probably did not learn my yes. lesson because I would have done it again today if I would have been able to get some bets in. Unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. Ten minutes are gone. That means that our pre-free show is done. That means there is no more final table betting for you guys today. Obviously, the final table starts right now, but we are going to commentate the final table with a delay. That happens in 30 minutes. So, Nano, this gives me the opportunity to talk to you for the first time in two weeks because so many things have happened. Do you know that GG Poker what? right now is legal in the beautiful country of the Netherlands, Nanonoka? Oh, is it? I didn't know that. Yeah, I heard that it was supposed to be pulled out, and if I guess if you're not a regulated site or something like that. But GG, you're saying it's got a license. Is that what I understand? Yep. It's got a license. I have already met some Dutchies with beautiful Dutch flags at the PLO tables, and I think only more will follow. So super exciting times for cool. everyone that's from the Netherlands. I've had a lot of people in the past that are like, oh, how can I play on GG? I was like, be patient. It's coming. It's coming. And I'm really happy that it finally worked out. There was some other big news as well from uh, GG. Jason Kuhn is now part of the squad. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I saw that. Um, and uh, I think Dan in the ground, you welcomed him at the World Series of Poker. But you know, it's, it's so ridiculous. You know, Jason Kuhn's a great guy, but the dude gets signed on then wins the 25k heads up for a bracelet literally within a couple of days i don't know when the exact time but like you get announced and then you win a bracelet like come on that 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 seems set up to me but man he did it it's pretty sick though if that was online people would say it's rigged <laughs> like that that yeah, is rigged I how know. do you join and then win a bracelet immediately but yeah just uh jason Poon things i guess have you been following the world series of poker a bit so far and anything that stood out for you besides Jason Kuhn winning a bracelet? Um, yeah, I, I do f just kind of read some updates here and there. Um, i trying to think. Man, I, I can't really remember now. There's just so much going on. But I, I just see Phil Hillmuth just keep reaching final tables thinking he's going to get his 16th bracelet. But uh, he got denied again and again and again. Well, at least two times already. And I feel like the series just started. But uh, it, it's really cool to watch or just and read. Mm -hmm. Do you have a little FOMO? I do have a little FOMO actually because like uh, I, I started recently looking is the World Series of Poker main event starting like can I still make it and I'm like oh man I don't know maybe I shouldn't but uh yeah uh, I'm, I'm getting a little FOMO just reading updates over and over again especially when I read updates and I recognize the people getting to the end if I didn't recognize the people getting to the end I'd be like oh whatever I'm just gonna get bust out in 100th place over and over again but yeah it's fun how about you? Elky, I saw Elky's yeah. name somewhere. He was getting deep in something, but I can't. I don't think he it worked out. Yeah, speaking of Elky, I don't know if you follow uh, Jenny on Instagram, but apparently they were having dinner in Vegas and they had a very loud discussion about religion. And then while they asked for the check, and it was a pretty big check, like a six hundred dollar check, apparently someone else, a stranger, just paid it already and left a note saying that like God is listening to you and watching over. I'm like, what the hell? That's like the craziest thing ever. Like, who the hell pays a six hundred dollar check and then just leaves a little message of God at the bottom and then runs out of the restaurant? Yeah. That's wild. But yeah, I have seen that they are there. I am very jelly. I mean, I'm pretty jealous of Elky's life in general, man. If you follow him on Instagram, you're like. I feel like everyone should live this life. Like, people deserve this. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to follow. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the profiles down. And then by the time we are done with our pre-show, we can maybe still chitty chat a little bit before the, ta the cards go cool. up in the virtual air, at least for us. The mid right there. there. Very first. Oh, there you are. Yes. I'm... Sorry, did you lose me? You cut. You, you just cut out for a second, but go ahead, start over. Go for it. All right, Docs, our biggest tech coming into this final table tonight. He apparently is a mid-stakes grinder, and it's the very first playing in the high roller Super Millions. Seems like he did cash once in Season 1, but not a regular to this tournament. Yeah, um... Yeah, for mid-stakes grinder, he comes in for a huge chip lead, though, right? He's got 100 big blinds. Uh, but if, he, if they're saying he's a mid-stakes grinder, right? Like, I'm wondering, is he just going to try to keep those pay jumps and stick, maintain that top spot, or is he really going to put some pressure on? And it's a big tournament, right? With playing 10K buy-in, there's, you know, 300-something K up top, and, like, his biggest scores here is 100K. So, you know, a lot of guys err on the side of caution. I guess we'll learn more from his hand history. 
Yeah, let's just take a look at how he managed to get as many chips as he actually has. Because when you look at this profile, that's not normally the profile of a guy who comes in as the overwhelming chip leader, or at least a pretty dominant chip leader. But he is. I do think in general the Finnish mid stacks grinders are very solid. Like I see a Finnish flag and I just stack them as good immediately because most of these guys they know what they're doing. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Dogs had on his journey to his very first final table ever where he apparently plays king 10 of clubs and he gets a little creative and wild on the river nanonoko talk to me yeah she gets creative on the flop too like uh if this is how the chip leader is playing i've got some pretty high hopes for him to just actually put some pressure on people because in this hand it's caused a three bet um it's pretty far in the tournament and he calls with just a bunch of back doors on the flop right it's ace nine eight so when three bet you, they represent a lot of ace kings, ace queens, um, but still floats it off, turns a pair, check, check, and realizes, you know, it's probably a good idea to turn his hand into a bluff uh, because his opponent has like kings, queens, even ace king and ace queen. It's hard for him to call on when it runs a four straight out there, right? Like it's really easy for ducks to have like a jack 10, an ace jack, uh, something backdoor flush. So it's a really nice bluff. If you want to be a good player, you need to know when to turn your hands into bluff, and this is the perfect spot to do it. Yep, I actually didn't even pay attention to the flop uh, call, but that is, I mean, once you see the back doors, you can't unsee them, something among those lines. He's like the eight of yep. clubs, that's his baby, like we're continuing all day, every day, but creative hand for dogs, definitely a big pot and very deep into the tournament. Because if this pot would have gone the other way around, then the Ray guy probably would have been our chip leader coming into this final table and not dogs, but well done. That gives us pretty high hopes for the rest of the evening. Let's go ahead and take a look then at the profile of the man who comes in with the second biggest stack tonight. The Ray guy from Mexico. Apparently his ninth season two appearance already. Has he made a final table in season two, Nanonoko? I don't think he did, right? Season one, according to the bottom right. I've seen his name before. Um, but I guess he got a 7th place finish, so that's why I can't remember too much from that tournament. Uh, but wow, final table the hybrid, that's pretty good. He got 8th place and still won 328k. So, um, you know, he's a guy who, sure we don't know his real name, but uh, for what I remember, this guy knows how to play. So, I think uh, he's not going to be no slouch. Nanonoko, September 19th is definitely season 2 though. That's not season one, so this is must it? be his second final. Yeah, of course. September 19 is like a month oh. ago, mate. <laughs> I thought it was said uh, 2020 for some odd reason. I'm not sure. Gosh, my bad. I'm never good with dates and numbers and anything like that. <laughs> no worries. It's not like you've played poker for a living. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that the Ray guy had on his journey to this final table. And this is honestly a pretty fun one. I looked at it and I'm like, hmm pretty crazy how this hand played out like it all makes sense but it still takes a lot of courage my goodness what do you make of it yeah um no it's not it's not just a lot of courage it's an insane amount of courage right because you're not even the pre-flop raiser so they know your hand is weak and you know you bet the flop you get raised uh, when there's still someone to act and you, you call and then the guy bets the turn and he jams the river like there's no obvious flush draws out there there's no obvious straight draw bluffs out there right like even some of the like, ace four they got there like honestly this is just a pure hero call um a soul read and soul read he was correct because he he won a lot of chips in his hand this is twenty thousand forty thousand blind so this is not uh this is not early this is very late very courageous yeah really well done I mean, this is the final 18, because the tables are not even full, the chip stacks are massive, even Dux has 2.2 million chippies already at this point, so this is very, very deep into... After winning this hand, by the way, his stack was a lot bigger than what he ended up with, so he is on a bit of a downswing, but hopefully he can turn things around after having a day and a half to calm down. Next up is the man that Limitless was talking about a little bit last week, and that is Mark Radoya. He comes in third he is apparently a two times wsop bracelet winner i mean who doesn't have one of those laying around these in this day and age right nana do you have any no i don't have any do you have any no no i don't just i think the flip and go too. was my best choice but or best chance but i missed it too busy 
But next next year, I'm gonna just save up all year and I'm gonna fire a bunch of bullets in the flip and go one. At least get into the money. So I have that on my resume and then take the rest from there. <laughs> yeah, we're happy to have Mark Ladoya back. As you guys can see, this man is no stranger to winning big prices on the right. Uh, basically all over, mostly in the WSP bracelet events by the looks of it. Man, he's been getting busy over at GG. I look at his profile and I'm like, I don't even know what to highlight. He's everywhere. Yeah, like, it's pretty solid, right? Like, a lot of 300 to 500k scores are putting his career highlights. Um, Limitless said he's been around for a long time, super old school. And, uh, you know, like, he's still here crushing. So, good stuff. The only thing we need to get rid of is that December 13th payout, because it's only double digits, you know, not triple digits there before the comma. But we're going to get rid of that today, hopefully. If he can just finish, I think it's top four or top five to make it another 100k plus score for Mark Rodoya. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that he had that I want to say helped him. But this one didn't help him. Or perhaps it did in the end because it did force him to go back to the register and fire another bullet. <laughs> no, no, 10-9 of spades. What do you make of it? Yeah, uh, well, this one was really early in the tournament. Um, checks around on the flop. Still got three people in here, right? There's a bet and a call because Mark's got a double gut shot here. You can hit an eight or a jack to make a straight. Divorce raises a call, so he's getting odds of call. And then it's still three way to the river. Binks the ace. Someone binks an ace on the river. It looks like it. Rodoya just goes all in. He's trying to represent the jack 10 as hard as he can. Daniel Divorce was like, uh, he calls, he's got top two, he only loses to Jack-10 really because even King-Queen would be pretty scared to, to jam at this point. Or King-Queen would have played more aggressively, right? Like, pretty mm -hmm. pretty big hand. I like to see these hands really early in tournament because you can want to see how crazy they are in this one. Uh, they seem to have gone nuts. Yeah, actually not that easy of a call, right, for Daniel Devoris on the river, because that is a very big bet this early into the tournament. A 30 big blind bet on the river. Then suddenly top two, it doesn't look that sexy anymore. Even though it's still ace king, aces up, like it, it's awesome. But that's actually a pretty tough call to make, I'd say. It's actually really tough if when I now that I look at it even more carefully, is because Daniel raises the turn, gets called in two spots, and Daniel's the, the last guy to act. But now Mark open jams into him. He retakes the lead and he's betting into two people, which looks extremely strong, right? um yeah. so yeah you're right it is a is it a tough call because also daniel divorce still has the first guy to act who who might be sitting there with jack 10 himself right it's pretty easy for someone to have jack 10 and they would have to call the turn right so it is a tough call it was the correct call and i think actually i like this bluff a lot because let's just say daniel's got like king queen i don't know if he's gonna he can call king queen it's you know it's a much weaker hand than ace king here i actually don't think you can call with king queen that seems pretty insane to me like even sets is something you still kind of have to worry about in a weird way even though maybe there would have been more things happening on the turn but it's a three-way pot it's very early in the tournament so people don't necessarily want to go ultra nuts unless they truly have the nuts and this jam on the river does kind of scream like i've got jack 10 so very well done by daniel devoros unfortunately this one didn't work out for mark radoya but he did rebuy and still made it to the final table in the end I guess we have to speed things up a little bit, but this was a fun and interesting hand. Next up, talking about speeding things up, we are going to take a look at the profile of Romashka, a Russian producer and personality. But we have been talking about Romashka a lot. This man, I don't know if he's producing a lot lately, Nanonoko. I feel like he's just playing <laughs> poker all day, every day, because you see him everywhere. Yeah, yeah, um, but he's playing character. I think I, remember, I saw in this video, he looks pretty happy, just like chilling. Um, you know, he brings, he, he brings like the happiness and action to the table online. Like imagine what he can do on the felt, right? Like, and he's, he's a pretty good player, right? For a recreational player, this guy gets some pretty good scores. Um, you know, he actually ranked 33rd season one, um, uh, and he's fun to watch. Someone I love to have. I actually think he's very good. I love, like, if we just stay on this profile a bit longer, look at the both ladies just laughing. Lady on the left laughing, mm -hmm. lady on the right laughing really hard Romashka he knows what he's doing Nanonoko not just at the tables let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Romashka had in one of his potential several bullets that he uh, fired in this tournament goes for 
I don't even know what this really is. Like, it's, it's a bit of everything. Talk to me, Nana. What do you make of it? <laughs> this is a level one uh, blow up, right? Like, it's, he raises the king seven. Um, but to be fair, like, because it's three way on the well, it's two way on the flop, and the guy leads into him, right? So it looks like usually someone would want to lead a strong hand. Uh, they wouldn't want to lead a strong to go for a check raise, especially on ace high board. You expect that guy to c bet a lot, so he raises, try to represent ace king plus, bets the turn, and he bets the river. He's still trying to represent that ace king and plus, right? And to be fair, I think he re represented pretty well. And the other guy was just got sticky of ace seven and was like, "I call you down." <laughs> All right, I love that you were able to break it down because I looked at it and I'm like, I'm not really sure what I want to say about this. But thank you, <laughs> Nananoko, for having my back and thank you for Romashka for giving us some early tournament entertainment, I guess. Because I guess we can all wait for our suited aces and our aces, kings and queens, but sometimes you do need people to spice it up a little bit with the king seven of flops. We are obviously looking forward to watching Romashka play again tonight. It's always a pleasure to have him at our final table. Next up, we're going to take a look at the profile of the man who has apparently never won it. I really thought he did win it once, but he's got a third place, a fourth place, a fifth place. Malacca Styles is back, Juan Dominguez. I feel like he was in the position to win it at least once or twice though, Nano. And we know that he's got the skills to do so. Yeah, um, he got third, fourth, and fifth. Like I said, never made top two, but he's uh, really, like his career highlights in live is, or just other tournaments is really good. If you look, one first, 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 second, third, huge scores. Uh, really talented player. And uh, he's got some moves that other people don't. Fun to watch too. Um, a lot of guys have shined in Season 2 that didn't shine so much in Season 1. Maybe today it's going to be Juan Dominguez's turn. I wouldn't hate it. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Juan Dominguez had, where he was battling it out with Romashka. And it's uh, quite the flop for Juan Dominguez. And all the money actually goes in on the flop too, because Romashka flopped top pair with a gutter ball. And we all know there is only one option at that point, you know, and that's pedal to the metal. Let's go. Didn't quite work out this time. So this is, we're just showing you how Ramashka put in multiple bullets and finally reached our final table here, right? Uh, but no, on the, on the flop, it's fine. This guy's, he's got a little straight draw. And, you know, he's got top pair and he's got some back door and, you know, just like, he just likes to get it in to try to build a stack. In this spot, he didn't build a stack. He lost some chips, but it is what it is. Um, for Juan's point of view, pretty easy you flop it straight you just check raising try to get it in <laughs> checks opponent bats raises a little bit opponents put you all in you're like all right i know whatever you may have at this point i am ahead unless his opponent would have nine seven of clubs i guess that would be very 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 gross then suddenly you have to avoid the world but <laughs> any other hand would have been okay Juan Dominguez winning some chippies early on. Let's hope he has a great run tonight. If I was able to do final table betting, I probably would have fell for it again, guys. I know the fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice. But I, I will keep getting fooled. And I will keep putting on Juan Dominguez until he finally takes one down. Let's take a look at our next player then. As we have 12 minutes until the cards go up into the virtual air. Upswinger. Nananoko, are you familiar with Upswinger? Um, well, he's probably winning money because he's he's here at the final table, right? Otherwise, he'd be down swinging. But no, nah, I don't. I'm not familiar with him. But medium stakes tournament crusher apparently plays a bunch of like it's like 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, all the way to one Ks regularly. Um, no, don't know much about him. Have you played with him? Maybe you have. No, the name does not ring any bells. I actually don't see that many Mexican flags. Maybe it's like the time that I play, but I play at different times as well. It's kind of funny. I always battle with the guys from Belarus and Russia, man. Like, those are the real PLO dudes. And the Canadians. I feel like the Canadians love PLO, too. And I haven't been able to play any tournaments lately because we were going through uh, yeah, the regulation change of GG becoming legal in the Netherlands. So I had to sit out for a little bit. But I just joined in the streets again. But did not have any time to play uh, No Limit. But I'll keep my eyes open for him. Profile looks all right, and I do feel that in general, whenever these guys that do perform very well in the medium stakes tournaments do finally have a shot at greatness, most of the time they leave a very good impression on us. So let's just go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Upswinger had, where he was battling it out with Limitless, the man that joined us the other week. And that was a lot of fun. 
the man who also got stacked here by Opswinger and Helenoko. What do you make of this play? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, this is such a crazy hand, right? Because, like, on the flop, nothing, you know, it's a little checky checky. Then, you know, Upswinger, yeah, okay, he makes a flush. He's going to bet the turn. Um, bets the third pot, gets called. In the river, he bets a third of the pot. So it tricks uh, Malinowski here to raise with his top pair, uh, top kicker uh, on this paired board. And Upswinger now jams all in. And Malinowski was just like, well, I got the ace of club blocker. So he shouldn't be re-jamming a flush, right? Um, I've got a pair of jacks, so technically I blocked some boats a little bit. He just thought, and like, why did he bet a third of the pot? Like, did he really do this event? Like, all these things didn't add up to Malinowski. I'm sure he took some time, but he ended up making mm -hmm. a call. He <laughs> still got shown a, a flush that wasn't enough flush to re-jam on a paired board. So really well played by yeah. Upswinger, because... Um, a lot of guys don't jam here. They just call thinking they can't get called by worse. But if you can get called by ace jack, then you better be jamming the king eye flushes too. Do you think that this is a play he would specifically make against someone like Limitless that he knows is not afraid to put chips in? Because I feel like this is not a play that you can make against everyone at any given table in this in these 10 case though, right? Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, that's the thing when you when you're a name like uh, Limitless here. You know people want to make moves on you. Um, I mean, like, you know he likes to pick off bluffs and everything. So, like, yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's designed to him. And maybe against other guys, he wouldn't bet a throw of the pot in the river. And he wouldn't go for the reshub. Because a lot of times, whenever I rejam here in this spot, they show me pocket sevens, like, every single time. You yeah, know? of or, course. Or, like, pocket <laughs> jacks. Yeah. No, there's actually, like, the more you look at it, you're like, man, why wouldn't he just call? Especially because Limitless's race was very big. 90k over the top. Uh, it feels that this is one of these spots where you just call and you know you're probably good, but, man, he just found that extra value and he actually managed to get the remaining chips of Limitless there, too. Well done by Upswinger. I mean, this doesn't strike me as a guy who's just happy to be playing the 10k. And it's now going to play very safe, right? This is actually a play that you would probably make in your own tournaments if the stakes are a bit lower. So well done by him. And that gives us plenty to be excited over. Next up is the man that I picked as favorite for the week. And if I would have been able to do some final table betting, I would have absolutely thrown some dollars at him. David Yen, also known as Miss Oracle. A long time ago, Nano, you got me very excited over this player. You kept hyping him up to me. He's never won it, but he got so close multiple times. And I do think it's safe to say that he lived up to your hype and the expectations because he has played damn good at our final tables when we covered him in the past. Yeah, did he get a second place in January, a third in February? Like, he, he's under the bottom though. So I don't know if he's, if he's your guy to pick today. We'll see. But um, he... He's just very good. And I remember playing cash games a lot with him, and he just straight up to the high stakes terms like every single other cash game player does because it's just free money. It's free money for him. He ranked fifth in season one. I didn't even know he did it that good. Man, I knew he did good, but fifth in season one is really good. Yep. For a man who's never won it, that's even crazier. It just shows how many deep runs he had. And also, he was part of a couple of the big ones, like uh, where the payouts were a bit higher. But. Clearly just a lot of 300 and 200k scores for him, or maybe like 120 a few times because yeah, he's not there because he had one monster score. Nope, he just grinded his way into the top 10. That's very impressive. Let's take a look at one of the hands that he had. I think this one is kind of straightforward where he was battling it out with Juan Dominguez. The only thing I guess I could ask, well, actually the flop is kind of funny. Talk to me through, no, no, because maybe there is a bit more to this hand than I thought at first. Yeah, so he gets actually real tricky on the flop. He checks back the ace queen on the a six five. I think he's actually perceived to to see bet this type of hand a lot. And Juan Dominguez, uh, he he takes the bait. He he overbets the turn and then goes for a big value on the river, um, thinking his opponent never has a better ace because he thinks a better ace like ace ten plus would always bet the flop. And apparently, it's not true. So, really well done by David Yen. And to be honest, let's just say David Yen C bets the flop. He bets the turn. He probably gets called by Ace-9. I think he goes check-check on a river, or maybe David Yen bets the river and Juan Dominguez just folds. So, he probably got more value the way he played it. And also protects him when he's got a hand like, say, pocket 7s, 8s, and 9s that want to check it down. Now he can show it on Ace-Queen. People's got to be scared of him, right? 
Mm -hmm. And Juan Dominguez was literally left with one big blind at this point. And, but this is really deep into the tournament. Did he just run it up from one big blind? Mm, he has to have, right? Because yeah, I don't think he can rebuy at this stage of the tournament. Jesus, you, no. The, the production didn't tell us this. Are you serious? The one big blind to the final table. Now I'm feeling pretty good about Juan Dominguez myself. Yes. <laughs> He's the real upswinger at this final table. Mate, I didn't notice that either. But that's he has literally one big blind at this point. But he entered the final table with 1.7 million chips. <laughs> what? <laughs> How many hands in there? He had the golden ball. He must have had the golden ball. All right. We have five minutes left until the poker finally starts, which we are very excited for, of course. But first up, we've got two more profiles to cover. Let's take a look at the profile of MRDL, a Chinese player, qualified via a 1K satellite by the looks of it, has never played in the high roller super millions before, but he did cash in the WSOP bracelet event number 32, $210. I'm gonna assume that he knocked me out in that one, Nenonoko. That seems like a tournament that I participated in and did not do very well. All right, this profile tells us absolutely nothing. Let's just take a look at his hand history. Maybe that will tell us a little bit more. Oh, a Chinese player who loves pocket eights. I'm not surprised. <laughs> no, but if you look at the hand, he really loves pocket eights, right? Because this is not <laughs> uh, a good board for him. It looks like he put some, some calls in there. Um, looks like the, the names are a little funny though, so I'm not sure what happened there. Um, so I don't want to commentate exactly on what the action was because it does say the Ray guy there. I'm not supposed to see Mr. DL because we might have the action wrong, but uh, he loves pocket eights. Looks like he, he t picked off some hands. <laughs> I mean, you say he really loves pocket eights, of course he does. He looks at pocket eights at this board and he's like, Do I beat Ace King? Yes, do I beat Ace Jack? Jack 10, King Jack. He beats all those hands, then, in our he wasn't worried in the slightest. He was probably wondering if he should raise again on the river or not. You know what? Just not too many hands that we're going to call him. Uh, I look forward to him getting pocket eights at the final table and hopefully running it up. Then let's talk a look about the man who has the biggest trophy case over at GG. He is literally breaking our interface at the moment because you have to squeeze profile for days. Too many profiles, too many badges. Nicholas Ostad, also a team champions member because he won one of those special events that put him on the champions team. Uh, like he needed a bit of extra support. I mean, is there anything we can say about Nicholas Ostad that we haven't said yet, Nenonoko? Nope. Um, just, I guess I forgot to say that he's probably going to win this tournament too. So five time he's champ not. coming? No, he, he's not. He might. He's absolutely not. I'll give you a. Uh, I'll give you ten to one that he's not winning today. Ten to one. What? what isn't that lower than the odds that they're they're offering? How do I know? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you can you can take my money. It's personally out of my pocket, so that should feel better to oh. you. Should, All right, I'll give you eleven point five to one. How about like a hundred? You know, it's so unlikely to win two to two times in a row. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why are you trying to hustle me live on air? All right, moving on. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Nicholas has said had that did a lot stack tonight, but you guys still put piles of money on him. The people at home are nuts or truly believe in the comeback potential of Nicholas Estad and trying to go back to back. Uh, Jack nine of diamonds here against Chris, his ace nine of hearts. What do you make of it, Nenonoka? Pretty, pretty uh, crazy. If you look at it, he, he bets the flop, you know, just continuation. Bet, bets the term, absolutely nothing. The guy still calls him ace high, hits the jack, gets value from ace high. Like, this guy just has the dream. I don't know, like, when he's bluffing, he, something miraculous happens. He wins some chips. Um, but nice, nice from Nicholas Estet. All right. Let's just take a look at that table then, because our action should start one minute from now. We do apologize, guys, for the hiccups we had. We've got some uh, connection issues with the software we are using, but we're going to just make this a fun and entertaining show for you guys, as always. If we do cut up every now and then, or we are a bit pixelated, forgive us. We'll work on it. It should be solved next week. No, no. Uh, who's got first choice? You or me? I don't actually know. We're on odds or even today. Let's see. 
We are. We are even. It's even. number fourteen. It's week. Yeah. So who do you want? You want I'll, I'll Ramashka? Just, right. You want David Yan? You want Nicholas Estet? A lot of good choices. No, I, I, I'm I'm going not full Nenonoko, but I'll go sort of Nenonoko. Like I am one. I am debating between David Yan and Ducks, but I'm gonna go with Ducks actually. I'll just pick Ducks. You're going with Ducks. I'm All going right. with Ducks. I mean, I was thinking about. I was thinking about going for the bottom, but if you're going near the top, then because I thought you were gonna pick Davy End, I'm like, I'm picking Nicholas instead. Shit, I gotta get who's who's near the top too. Ah, uh, all right. I still got. I got until the the seat selection ends, right? Do we do yeah. we know the odds on Romashka? It was was it big better than everyone? Yes, Romashka is like thirteen to one. God, should I pick him or Nicholas instead, Roddy? Which one should I seal you, end gonna... you with? Because Nicholas... <laughs> end me with, mate. It's week 14. You know that, right? I know it feels like we've been it. doing season two forever, but we have barely been started, okay? This is only week 14. R Romashka, his me? odds are better than Nicholas Estet, right? Despite having 2.5x the stack? Yes. That is correct. All right. And I'm like ten points. I'm like five to ten points ahead of you. I'm gonna just go with Ramashka, then. Just gonna end it, and I can kind of give you a freebie a little bit. Not a freebie, but he, it's a good pick, isn't it, Roddy? I Romashka, I think he's very, very fun. I don't think it's a good pick because I feel that Romashka <laughs> can blow up any moment, even if he gets heads up with an overwhelming chip lead. I think it could still go wrong, but. I will be say that if Romashka does end up winning it, I'll be hyped and I'll be very happy. Mostly for Romashka, I'll be a little bit happy for you. But I think that would make it a very memorable episode. So I'd be happy, but I don't think it's going to happen. All right. Well, hey, I, I said it. The game's about to start. Let's just lock it in. Go for it. Um, I'm having... That? What will happen? Ducks, obviously, as chip leader, had the final choice to, to pick a seat at the table. And he said, I'll stay right where I'm at. So on the right of Nicholas Estet. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Like he's expecting him to run it up. So he's not out of position against him. Uh, honestly, because the Ducks doesn't really play these tournaments very often, right? Based on what we... Under, because it's pocket tens right away. It must be nice. I was going to say, if I was Ducks, though, I probably would have switched with Mark Rodoya there. Get position on Ramashka, who plays looser. So you don't play out of position more often. Uh, and you still get position on Nicholas Estet. That's what I would have done, at least. But we did see how uh, Ducks played his King Ten of Clubs in the pre-show. And it didn't really seem like he's very intimidated or afraid. There's a king, by the way. After things go check, check on the flop. A king for Mark Radoya immediately. Wow, Nicholas Estet getting unlucky. Can we uh, save this VOD and upload it somewhere? Come on, I mean, he can. Oh, he can't really win this, right? He needs to hit a queen. <laughs> well, he can't That's win it, funny. but what he can do is make sure that he doesn't lose it. So they are they are gonna chop this up. I guess there are three diamonds, but I don't really see either of them ever before. Yeah, Nicholas has said, "Well, obviously, you think that he's the only one with a ten. Do you think? Nah. Even if he goes all in, I don't think Mark Rodoya falls right." When you bet like a third pot, you kind of induce some stuff too. But Nicholas Stets, he's a solid guy. He's like, he doesn't do those kind of plays so much. So no worries. Mm -hmm. Chop it up. I'm a little bit surprised that he just called there. But I guess he has been waiting a day and a half to play this final table. And even Nicholas doesn't want to bomb out in the first end. Nicholas is cautious. But then when he makes a bluff, it like usually almost always works. Because they give him so much credit. He's 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 quite... He's quite tough to play against, to be honest. You don't know which gear he's on. Pocket sixes makes a set. Does any of us get a point, Roddy? Any of us? No. No. Oh, shit. That's not how it works. <laughs> it is good news for Ducks, though, that he doesn't have anything better than what he actually has. Otherwise, this hand could have been real ugly very early into the tournament. Romashka decides to bet his set and sees the quick fold. That's a real feels bad moment. That's almost worse than getting a bad beat because Romashka plays a lot of hands. So then when you do finally flop a set, you expect a couple chips to head your way. Especially on that flop, right? The chip leader raising, like, in the ace-high flop, like, not mm -hmm. C-betting. Like, it's, 
seems like a slap in the face, but uh, I guess you can't complain too much. Like, I was expecting full double up on the first hand there for Ramoshka, and like thinking like that was a great score, a pick for me, but just two big blinds. I guess three if you want to count the the blinds. I mean, it'd be a fun final table if Romashka does get his quick double. I know that much. So let's see <laughs> what Mark Radoya decides to do here after Juan Dominguez opens things up with ace nine offsuit. He's really taking his sweet time. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was thinking that's more likely he's just sitting out. <laughs> Something. You know what's wild, by the way, Nano? Is that this week our guarantee was actually 1 million. I think the guys from GG were not quite sure how many people were at home to play because obviously the World Series of Poker are going on. So they decided to just set a guarantee at 1 million and we'll see how many of the, the diehards actually show up. But turns out a lot of them missed the high roll of Super Millions, man. 170 entries. So uh, that's actually a lot for the guarantee of 1 mil. Yeah. Um... Yeah, pretty much. Because the World Series, like like you said, you'd expect like less people. But um, there's people who don't want to go to World Series. People just want to stick to GG Poker, especially those Dutch people, right? Because apparently they can play there now. Mm -hmm. There was. Uh, I actually went to my local casino as well last. Was it Friday or Saturday? Actually, as we have the Ray guy opening it up with sevens and upswing has four three. Uh, I decided to play a bit of poker, but it was a nightmare. Like, I got onto the waiting list at 8 p.m., and by the time I could finally play, it was 11. And I wasn't going to stay that long because I was actually with my mom and my grandma. But even at the table there, people were talking about GG being legal now and they're being excited to try it. So I thought that was kind of cool. Oh, I wanted to ask you, did you get to play your friend, Anatoly Filatov, in the five-card PLO Twitch thingy? not yet, but it's happening real, real soon. And I don't worry. I will ping you like a day or two in advance so you can clean out your schedule. I don't think you're doing a whole lot anyway because you've been here available every Wednesday morning for the last 70 months in a row. So I do not want to hear any excuses of you being too busy to watch me play against Anatoly. You better be there. But I couldn't do it because I couldn't log into my account because some things were being changed. But I now, uh... today, for the first time, actually managed to log in and managed to play so I'm going to find a day as soon as possible that works for me, that works for Anatoly. And I will let you know when we play, mate. Don't worry. I was just thinking you didn't. it did happen. You didn't tell me because you didn't think we're friends anymore or something because I picked a, a great winner. Um, you know, we've been off. We haven't been communicating lately. You know, I just wasn't sure what's up. But okay, it is still going on. Good to hear. Ace Jack. Mm -hmm. Hey, I just want to point out, these two guys got some history based on the pre-show. They were going at it, uh, each other's throats, right? So I'm thinking Juan Dominguez is going to give him more action than he probably normally would give someone with Queen Jack. It was a chick call. The admin did confirm, by the way, that Juan Dominguez ran it all the way up from one big blind. That's a ridiculous run going from 40,000 yeah. chips to 1.8 million when the big blind is 40k. Goes check check on the river here. Romashka will receive the good news that his ace jack is good, but that was still a pretty big pot, man. That's uh, almost right, 16 big blinds heading his way. All right. Look at it. Romashka's got 13 minutes and 28 seconds. Everyone else has less. Do you think at any point he goes below someone else? In shock no, he doesn't go below someone. Well, maybe the Ray guy. Like, obviously, that's possible, right? If Romashka does have one very difficult hand and the Ray guy doesn't have any decisions in the next 40 minutes, then yes. If you're asking me, will Romashka be ever below the 10-minute mark? I will say no. Romashka doesn't have tough decisions, Roddy. Like, in that last hand, he, he checks so fast on the river. Like, think, he's, he's decided before the card even falls down. You know, he's like, I'm going to bet. I'm going to check. You know what I really love about it, though? is that some people, they love playing poker and they know, uh, but they are totally aware of all the timing tells and whatnot, but they just hate mm -hmm. pretending. And they just know what they want to do. They either will do this or they'll do that. And yeah, sure, sometimes it's absolutely plus EV to really go over everything or take your time and see if you can squeeze in that tiny value bet. But that's probably just not part of his character. Like he's probably just a man that doesn't want to pretend, doesn't want to fake, doesn't want to waste any time. And he just knows if you check, I check. If you bet, I call. And uh, whatever, 
Like now he's he wasting our time. Though. He's got ten four offs to undergun, taking seven seconds. Roddy, he's he, maybe he heard my commentary. He's trying to match the time make of someone else. No, that was probably him celebrating with some vodka after winning the previous hand. Don't worry, mate. Uh, can you believe that yeah, the Ray guy, right. by the way, just opened folded pocket force? He's about to get punished for this because we are going to see a four on this flop, then enough. No? Turn. Turn, you said. You said turn. Turn the river. Worry. You know, it's a... that's going to be a four somewhere. Ducks does decide to defend his big blind here with queen six of clubs. Juan Dominguez has queen jack. It's not the prettiest flop for him, but he can definitely represent the ace. But then again, Ducks as the chip leader could also represent the random seven. And that three of clubs may actually give Ducks the courage to start betting. Yeah, normally the, you'd just be like, okay, I'm, I'm done with the hand. But this, wow. when you when you don't, see a nice uh, over bet there. This guy's game came to play. He already opened nine eight off to first hand. He's we saw his pre show. Like, uh, I'm pretty excited. You should, you, did you pick ducks to win? Yes. Oh, you, you only picked him because he's from Sweden or Finnish. He's from Finland. Finland. Those are two different countries, aren't they? God damn it. <laughs> yes, Nananoka. <laughs> I mean, they are very close to each other. They are neighboring countries, but Sweden is blue and uh, yellow, mate. Finland is blue and white. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to stop talking about that. Moving on. I'm never, I was never good with the flags. <laughs> I know the Chinese you know flag all the really flags. well, though. <laughs> good job, mate. You know the American flag, too, right? Stars and stripes. Okay. Uh-oh. So. Upswing are getting a little creative here with this king jack of spades in middle position by the looks of it but david jen what do you think he's gonna do here with queens i don't think we just call right i think we raise it up again most most people just jammed us in um queens is not really that type of hand where you're like trying to trap your opponent to see a flop it, it's quite vulnerable still you know kings and aces are much better uh and plus he should know that people are bluffing them and stuff like that Nice. And he's also David Yan. He doesn't. He's not scared. You know, like some people are like, oh man, I don't want to bust first. I'll see a flop and let them hit a king or ace. Or, you know, like play. He plays proper poker. I'm gonna say I'm surprised with how big the pots have been so far. There's been a couple of episodes where the first 12 to 15 minutes we don't really see a pot go above six big blinds, and everyone is just playing it very safe, kind of waiting for one of the shorties to bust, but. Uh, they are not afraid tonight. They're not slowing down. We've seen multiple pots over 10, 15 big blinds already. And I do like, obviously, David Jan just jamming it in with the queens. Yeah. Um, I'm actually uh, pretty... I don't know. I can't... Can I really be impressed already? I don't know. But, like, I've got good signs, uh, thoughts for, for Ducks, right? Like, from what I've seen, a little bit of him, not knowing anything about him, watching the pre-show, like, I think he's gonna he's gonna make a, make a name for himself today mid stakes crusher mate those guys that are grinding yeah, right. the 200 and 300 dollar like are he, good he must have paid gg for that profile right they're like yeah just tell him i'm a mid stakes crusher just trying to end it up he's three betting king jack <laughs> off so this guy's a high stakes crusher man i can just tell insta fold good pick roddy he should with david yan or something else man i'm feeling salty already Congrats on getting some points. <laughs> I love how you haven't seen me in two weeks, and even in the last month and a half, you spent like seven hours with me. Now, 12 minutes into our actual show, you're already getting salty. Just because I made a <laughs> decent pick. What is this? Don't worry. Hey, Ramachi's got position on your guy. He's just... Dude, Ducks doesn't know about Ramachka. That's going to be his downfall. He's going to realize this guy. I think everyone. is just going to... I, th I think Good everyone place. knows about Romashka at this point in the 10 case. Because Romashka, it's not just that he plays almost every week. He fires multiple bullets every single week. So if you do play some of these tournaments, and it's not like he only plays the 10Ks. He plays a lot of the 2Ks, 3Ks, the 5Ks, uh, Blade Prime, like we saw on his profile. I think mm -hmm. everyone knows Romashka at this point. Okay, we, we know he put in multiple bullets from the pre-show alone. You know, like he, <laughs> he lost some hands. I, re I found out something though. Romashka only uses time bank pre flop because he's like sipping on some vodka or something. But once he's involved in the hand, 
every decision at that point is really quick. So here he just thinks mm -hmm. just because he's he's doing something else. It's not actually thinking. Maybe he's multi-tabling. Man, it feels like Dux is winning 70% uh, of the hands so far. Now he's, of course, getting some decent hands. Speaking of decent hands, there is Ace-King suited. But this is actually the kind of hand where I feel like someone may stand up and be like, all right, enough is enough, Dux. Like, you've been winning almost everything. There's no way that you have it each and every single time. This time he actually has the, the finest hand of them all so far. But this man is on a heater. All right, how many eliminations in break number one, you think? We go in one, two, zero, three, seven. Mm, two. I think we lose two, two players before the break. Yeah. So we're going to lose Ducks, and who else, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> if we lose Ducks before the break, I'll get a Nananoko tattoo. Oh, that reminds me. Sure he didn't live in the city. He was flying down. He said <laughs> he said he was flying down to Vegas to play that guy heads up for that match, and I haven't heard anything about it though. So I wonder if he made it down there. Maybe he's not there yet, but he will fly soon. I mean, the World Series of Poker lasts for a long time, though. No? Yeah, I think like the whole month of October and some of November. Um, yeah. At least two weeks into November, mate. Dox is getting hit with the deck at the moment. He gets ace-king again. I know it doesn't mean that much if we don't win too many chips with it. Obviously, the big hands are going to be more important, but it's a good feeling where maybe if you were a bit nervous coming into your final table the first time ever, at least on this side of a 10K, you come in as chip leader. Yeah, he's, he's just flying at this point. He's already won 600,000 chips. He hasn't really been at risk with anything. Now he's sitting on ace-king again. And Romashka really is not living up to the hype of being the fastest player in the West or East. Yeah, he, uh, needs to start paying attention. <laughs> He's like, too many people at the table. I'll come back later. But he is going to pick a little bit. Nicholas Estet can lose some chips. He could be out. Yeah. Some people reshove this spot. He is. He would mm -hmm. be reshoving on a kind of tighter, like not tighter, but a smaller stack. So that's why he he Ooh. does fold. Like If it's a big stack, he definitely would have would have reshoved, I think. You see how quickly Dux decided to jam there. That was like an 0.1 second jam. Nicholas is that his cards weren't even in the middle yet, and Dux was already all in. Queen jack. Yeah, nice timing by Nicholas. Could have yeah. definitely been in some trouble there with Ace 3. Let's see how Dux decides to play his ace eight of clubs in the small blind against Mark Rodoya's open under the gun. Not bad. Flopping top pair and backdoor clubs. Um Yeah, pretty good. I think Mark's thinking, okay, what's flats from the small blind? That will fold this flop. Mm, I guess high cards, king queen type hands. Throws a bet out. Obviously, I say it's not folding. But once he see a call you here, he's, he's gonna think his opponent has like mid pocket pairs. What's up? Oh, would he raise? Nah. Yeah. Whatever raises that. You don't know ducks, mate. True. Um, but with 40 big blinds, more than 40 big blinds, it, it makes it quite dicey when you raise and get called. Like, there's actually a lot of... Actually, raising on a flop, the ideal thing to happen is for your opponent to just fold. But anyways, he actually takes the lead, quarter pot, on the nine. Interesting. It's, uh, not something I see too often, but I can really get behind it because ace-king type hands, they just check the turn 100%. So, <laughs> nice. So he kind of like stopped the free equity type hands. Mm -hmm. In a weird way, the best thing he could do here is check, right? And let his opponent bluff. But obviously that's something yeah. we know. Cards up. That's not something he could possibly know. Yeah, he doesn't know that. To be honest, he's probably going to go for a big bet. Or... He's, he's going to hope his opponent just has like a big pocket pair, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Tens, checks. When you hit this card. Tens, jacks, queens, yeah, kings, I think he's going to overbet. I think you're correct. 
I think he's gonna bet like 900k and hope to get called. I mean, we know he throws over bets out there. That's why I'm getting more vibes of an over bet coming here, right? Like, because he does it as a bluff. He's probably thinking, I got to go for some value if it do. But even if he bets small, oh, what? he's going for the tiny bet. The the potentially induce. Kinda... Yeah. Yeah. Crying cold. I like it too. I like it too. It's does creative. get the full Mark Radoya with Queen High. Obviously not a whole lot that he can do there. But I actually kind of like it because it does open the door for his opponent to come over the top. Uh, creative play. Dox is very unpredictable so far. No bust outs yet, Roddy. Absolutely nothing. You lied. You said two was going to bust out. I haven't seen a single player even get close. Before the break, I said, no, 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 we still have 40 minutes of poker. Well, actually, 35. Did I congratulate you on your win yet? Did I, did I jinx it yet? Because he's got 5 million chips now, you guy. Oh, <laughs> you're getting ridiculous now. Mate, he's, he came in with 3.9 million. He did win 1.1 so far, so I think Dox is off to an excellent start. But no, you're, you're running out of material now, Nanonoko. Be a little more creative. Come on, be a little more invested <laughs> in your first time with Roddy in like three weeks. It's been too long, you know? I'm just trying to throw anything I can out there. Okay, ace-5 suited solver versus the uh, little sevens, I think. Fair fight, right? Because no sevens in a oh, one seven gone. Oh, he just muck it. Okay, I didn't expect yeah, that. On... Everyone loves suited aces. Yeah, but under the gun, though, and he doesn't have, like, the biggest stack out there. I'm not too surprised that David Yen decides to let go of ace-5 under the gun. I like what the Ray guy is doing here, bumping it up with the sevens. Mark Radoya has nine seven. He's got no idea in how bad of a shape he's in. He doesn't want to throw away any other chips. Obviously, guys, for everyone at home, we are still running Rush and Cash Friday, where you guys can play with some of the GG squad members or GG pros at the Rush and Cash tables. Where if we are joining any of your tables, then the cash drops will be doubled. I haven't been able to participate in the last two weeks, but this Friday, I promise you guys. I will be in the mix, probably stream a little bit of it too. See if we can uh, get some bigger cash drops together. All right. Let's curious to see what Mark does here. He just holds King-10 suited. All right. So everyone's just respecting this chip leader. Now does he have more chips than the rest of the table combined already? <laughs> Huh, well, let me oh, no, he doesn't. I, I did look. I did look. <laughs> Keeping you sharp. What time is it for you right now? And soon the clock changes a little bit, right? At least for me. I know that's like coming within a month. Already. And then the show actually starts already an changed. hour earlier for me. Oh, it's already changed for you? Uh, yeah, I pushed it back. So it's like uh, it's it's like almost 6 a.m. here. So it was, we okay. started, we usually started at 4 a.m. before. Now we start at 5 this time. Is that better? I don't know. I guess it should be Just... better, right? Yeah. But Just are you adjusted to it yet? You feel sleepy today, Nano. Are you, are you with me? I'm going to... Yeah, maybe that's why I'm just saying some random ass shit here and there, right? Like, I'm a little, a little tired, but it's all right. I'm with you. All right. Mark Rodoya has got King 10 of clubs here. He's got top pair, but this is obviously a somewhat scary board. I'm sure that he thinks that he's got the best hand. The Ray guy is looking at his deuces and he's like, yeah, probably not today. So Mark Radoya wins a couple of the chippies back that he's lost before. Other than that, not a whole lot of movement yet. Nicholas is that quiet so far, waiting for an opportunity to get some chips. Mr. DL. What do you think the DL means? Like his like name? Or something? Or you think it's like download? He's like a downloader. I don't know. <laughs> I was actually going to say download. <laughs> it's funny that we both think of the same stupid, irrelevant stuff. Uh, <laughs> down low? <laughs> down low. All right. I, I have no idea. Set of sixes again for Ramashka. Same guy he's up against. Last time his opponent check folded. This time he's got top mm -hmm. pair. 
Yep. Last time Docs had eight nine offsuit and really did not connect with the board at all. This time Docs flops top pair, has a couple backdoors to work with. Uh oh. No, Romashka, that'd be so unfortunate. That would actually be yeah, very no. sad. Be, I'm gonna be mega tilted because you know I've got some vested interest in this now, right? I told I said he's gonna win. He's guy flops a set and he's he's out. All right, he's back. He got too excited. He shook his computer so much it disconnected the internet. I feel like that's one of the very yeah. few turns that was going to save ducks quite a bit because now your top pair of nines with queen kicker doesn't look that good anymore. You're obviously worried about mm -hmm. some other runouts and much the card too, but he still has a set. And any set is a pretty good set in general. Yeah, no, but definitely an action kind of killer like to get multiple streets in. Look like Ducks is was he thinking about leading? Because he's been doing this kind of lead like on these kind of cards and he goes for it. I think as played where Mashka probably just has to call. Because if his opponent has a seven and he just rips it on him if you raise, it's just a disaster. Hmm. Let's call. That card shouldn't change a whole lot. Yeah, Ducks was what just hoping Ducks to end the hand right do? there. He's like oh, yeah. Hmm, don't know what to do. I think Ramashka can value bet this despite the four straight out there. Um, hmm. Well, checks. I guess he doesn't want I to mean, be blown off the hand. Checked. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's okay. We'll forgive him. He does chip up to 2.8 million. Ducks finally loses a couple chips. So he drops down to 4 6, but obviously started this final table with 3 9. And Mark Radoya has a set. If you guys are new to the show, I know that sets only happen after the flop is being dealt, but he's got one. And Nananoko knows it. And we're going to play some pocket fours. This is where Nananoko <laughs> will wake up. MRDL is going to defend Jack-9. And fours are going to flop a set. Because pocket fours always <laughs> No, but Chinese set. guys, they only play cards of eights in it. No. See? Out. <laughs> you think Jack-8, he would have played? Jack-8, yeah, he would have played. <laughs> 8 3 suited no. he would have played, but you know, Jack 9 offs, so he's like, nah, no, thank you. I'm actually surprised that he doesn't want to throw in that one extra big line to see a flop with Jack 9. Yeah. Um, he, does, like, he doesn't really play on GG that much. Like, who knows if he's even a professional player? But uh, to be fair, like, he's kind of like, if he calls and blinds down quickly, then they kind of all wait for him to bust first by folding. Mm -hmm. Now he's in a little bit of a race with Nicholas Estet. So I think it's reasonable. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I don't hate it, but I was just curious about it. Wondering what your take on that was. Like, I wouldn't ever, I wouldn't ever consider calling from the small blind or anything, but if you're closing the action, Jack Dine could flop pretty good. Uh, yeah, Makes yeah I understand. To maybe um, wait. All right, Mark actually didn't see bet this flop. He's got he had like the top pair, the top is of the kickers on that board. Does check, but uh, I don't know. I'm getting some checky vibes from him again. He does check, so maybe one more check, and then someone throws a bet out on the river. <laughs> Ooh, huh. In funny kind one. of a funny card. Yeah. Like both players check, check, are not sure if they like that card or not. Yeah, I think you're spot on. Don't really see anything. Yeah, else. Unless Mark wants to, Mark might block bet. That's the only other play I can really see happen. Like put like quarter pot out there or something. Yeah, that's what's going to mm -hmm. do. Block bet. And it actually gives him some extra chips. Unfortunate there for David Yan. Not the biggest spot, but still almost 10 big blinds heading towards Mark Radoya's way. The man who came into this final table in third place. MRDL's got queens. Mr. Downloads got some queens. <laughs> He's downloading these queens straight onto the, <laughs> to the center. Downloading. Way. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Upload those chips to my stack. Here we go. I'm trying to figure out some uh... other words with DL, but... I'm thinking of drooling, but you don't really want to put that into your... Oh, we do get a call. Ducks. Ducks does not flop a king. Dragon link? But I don't even know what that means. It's If I was to guess, it's probably just his name. Like some, He's got like a Chinese name and it's just like DL for short. D Lao? 
Is that a name? I don't know. Like I, I'm not, I'm not that Mandarin. educated in the Chinese names, to be honest. <laughs> oh, oh no, no. All right, Mark Radoya has got ace queen offsuit on the gun. He's probably going to open it up. Juan Dominguez, who has been losing some chips so far, has ace jack of spades. It's obviously not necessary for him to get super creative here when he's playing big blinds, but yeah, he does strike me as a guy, Nano. Mark has been opening a lot, and Juan Dominguez may look at his ace jack here and thinks this is the best hand. Yeah. 20 big blinds just went up too, huh? <laughs> Some people get desperate in these spots. I don't mind this. It's kind of like, well, I'm not committing all my chips, but I'm still using my hand and not folding it. Um, Ace low, low, and it's all good. over, though. <laughs> yeah, for Mark, though, like, it, it does look strong what his opponent's doing, but then again, he's up against a guy who does make plays here and there, so he probably knows that. I think he'll at least mm -hmm. flop. I mean, the, the re-raise is so tiny. It's like four and a half big blinds. Almost. Yeah, this, yeah, that's this is bad. Yep. This is one of these flops that is very, very bad for Juan Dominguez. Especially because if it does raise him, Mark could be playing, you know, a lot of Queen Jack of Diamonds, Jack 10 of Diamonds, uh, King X of Diamonds, and even then, that would obviously be doing pretty good against Ace Jack, but... I think Juan Dominguez is yeah. in a world of trouble here unless we can get some nice turns and rivers. Yeah, with these stack sizes too, they seem they can quite commit. Well, wow, okay, check, check. Interesting. Honestly, I'm not thinking, Mark's probably thinking his opponent's got either aces, kings, or queens, or jacks, you know? Um, and if his opponent's got queens or jacks, well, he's not calling a bet anyways, so he might as well just check play a little cost, maybe induce a bluff here and there occasionally. So I was, I thought they would get commit all the chips at some point, but as played right now, maybe they don't. Well, if Juan Dominguez bets, oh my goodness. Wow. Well, well, no. Spade, spade on the turn and river. And Juan Dominguez ends up with the nuts. I mean, I don't think that Mark Rodaya really had a way to win this hand because I don't think Juan Dominguez would have ever folded, but... That is just kind of a brutal run out for Mark. And now the only question is, Nanonoko, how many chippies is he going to lose? I think it's all of them. Well, we know Juan's going to jam. Can the ace queen, man. I think he could fold, Roddy. Sucks, what do though, you right? think? Like, like uh, if his opponent had ace queen, he probably wouldn't, wouldn't jam himself on a river. He probably would just call. He had ace jack. And Marks is probably thinking this dude might have aces and kings still. Like like I said, right? To to three bet this precise and like a uh, the sizing pre-flop. Check this flop and turn. Like it's very possible. Uh, I think he could get laid down if he wants to. It just sucks because the price is only like 10 big blinds, you know, like considering the pot size. It's less than that. Yeah, it's quite a bit less than that. It's less than nine even. Oh, you're right. Math. Don't worry, Nana. That's mm -hmm. why I'm here. The only show on the planet where the white guy is better with numbers than the Asian dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It is. Yeah, I mean, the funny like, thing is did, that we didn't Mark point out has... the obvious, though, Roddy. Pocket Four's also got there. He got to be worried about that, right? I actually did think about it, but I'm like, I'm not going to say it because this is actually a serious <laughs> hand. And in serious hands, I don't say stupid <laughs> stuff, unlike you, Nanonoko. Uh, but I did think about it. I don't know. It, it's hard for Mark because Mark has really underwrapped his hand, right? Like, check, 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 True. check. Now he's betting ace queen. So he may think that Juan Dominguez in no universe thinks that Mark, his hand, is as strong as ace queen normally is. It's just the raise on the river also looks very strong. Yeah, if you're a solver type, to be honest, this is literally like the top of your range. And if you fold at the top of your range, you're folding everything. Um, the only thing Mark Rodoy can have better than Ace Queen is if he slow played Aces and Kings pre flop, you know? Like, and even that's mm -hmm. unlikely because a lot of guys just jamming in pre looking like they're going to get it in with those 20 big blind stacks. So, this is the top of his range. He's probably supposed to call this jam. 
But now we play poker. We use reads. We throw those solvers in the garbage can. Um, and then from a from a re- like a gameplay flow, I'm just thinking like he's usually be here. It's hmm. tough. Don't forget he wants to Dominguez did three He knows bet. the solver says the call. He can't. Yeah. Juan Dominguez did three bet pre flop. Even though it wasn't mm-hmm. that big, but it went from 100k to 225k. So did make it two and a half big blinds extra to go. I think he's going to fall, to be honest. Yeah, it's also under the gun versus middle position, right? So, like, supposed mm-hmm. to be strong ranges here. And let's just say Juan had a hand like ace five to solver, right? Like he's not gonna jam the river, he's just gonna call. Um Yeah. Like if Juan had an ace, he would just call. He wouldn't jam the river. Especially with the flush getting there. That doesn't help because like Juan Domez could have ace fights. It's not likely, but it's possible. Mark is taking his time, but I think the more he goes over this hand, the more he's leaning towards a fold. Even if he feels that everything you said is correct, this is the top of his range, he is supposed to call here, I actually think he's going to find a fold. Losing this one would be a pretty Two. big deal, man, because he'd make him one of the shortest stacks at this table. He folds. Good. Well done. Very well done. Solid. Yep. You never want to get a round of applause for a fold, but this was a good fold. Come on, pocket fives. Raise it up. Raise it up. See a flop. Come on. Set mine with no stack. Let's do it. <laughs> Snap fold, mate. <laughs> Don't even dream about it. Well, that hand did take a very long time, so now I think it's less likely we're going to lose two players before the break. I felt like we had a nice little pace going, but that hand, even though it was a fun one, it took a solid six minutes, so <laughs> I think now it's going to be hard to get rid of two guys before the break. Yeah, I think Romashko probably left and came back already. Made some made oh some records. Goodness. What the hell are these flops? I mean, round two, same guys, by the way, Nanonoko. 10-9 of clubs on 8-6-3, two clubs <laughs> versus queen three of clubs. Uh, this is ridiculous. This is like an all-in potential hand as well, especially if you take some of the bad blood of the previous hand into consideration, <laughs> right? Yeah, if there's a check raise for sure. But this is funny because, oh, okay, but the least action accessible has been taken. Like earlier we saw, we thought the ace-jack and ace were going to get in at some point. Then the check happens on the flop. There's the little bet. This is going to be a calm pause. The club rolls off. Yeah, but like Juan could even raise here though. 10 9, 2 overs, cool. 10 high flush draw, got shot. I wouldn't hate a little race. Well, mm. well good, good card for obviously for Mark. And he's probably thinking, look, I'm going to try to make it look like I'm bluffing, get, try to get hero called by like an 8, a 6, some pocket 7s. That's what I'm thinking. Mark can go for for a big bet on this card, I think. Man, Juan is going to let it go real quick. Man, that's two hands in a row. It felt like they could have gotten it all in on the flop. Doesn't happen. And then the deuce of hearts rolls off on the turn. And you're like, all right. Well, now I guess the options are somewhat limited. Romashka with an ace king. But it seems like the rest of the table doesn't have a whole lot. Nicholas Ostad not quite able to run it up so far. Did have pocket tens as his opening hand of the night, but that was by far and away the best hand he's had so far. All right, Ace King. Nice blinds, guaranteed yeah. victory. I love it. That was a that was a real ruddy moment there, Nenonoka. You get excited over an Ace King while the rest of the table has absolute garbage. Like if I would do that, you would make fun of me. I just want you to know that. Do you have any idea how many points I actually have in our little side bet? Or no, no idea? No, I know you're leading. I know you're ahead. But, I... mate, we are only basically three months in, okay? This is the middle of month four, and we are supposed to do a full season. I know we've had some hiccups, but soon we'll be Mr. Consistent again. We'll be here uh, every Tuesday as Opswinger just gets a walk with Queen 5. 
And I am not worried at all. Like it's a marathon, Nanonoko, not a sprint. I like to sprint. I've got the lead, I want to maintain it. Queens. Why well, the Ming is so King fast? Five. Yeah. King five, not quite the dream hand to defend your big blind with. So we are still with all nine queens again. And David Yen has pocket tens. Uh-oh. Oh, David no. Yen could be in serious trouble here because Dox has been getting so active. I'll be real, Nano. If I play to win, there is no way I'm ever folding pocket tens against the guy who's opening every hand. Yeah, he's opening like garbage hands too, right? Like he, we've seen him open some really, really garbage. Like queen nine suit is early position, eight nine off suit late position. I think these tens are just going to ship it in and he could bust before yeah. everyone else and he does. Snap call. David Yen does get called and he needs to get lucky here. He needs to find a 10. No 10 on the flop. That doesn't change anything. We need the 10 of clubs or the 10 of spades. Or it is all over for David Yen, my pick of the week. Unfortunately, he goes out in ninth place. He plays to win it. We did say that in advance. And uh, these are the kind of plays that you see players make when they do play for the win. Gets ace king again. He's actually, Nananoko, he's had like three ace kings, two queens, and I don't know what else in like the last eight hands. It's actually insane how hard Dox is getting hit by the deck. Yeah. Deck someone, right? You did say two eliminations, so we are on pace now again. What's this? Ace, jack, ace, oh. king, and sixes. Oh, man. I think. I two pick of you think ace of jack the week in? going out in. I think it's. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. I think Nicholas is too patient. I think he's too good. But I don't know. But Mark it is has ace been jack opening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark has been opening a fair bit. Oh, my God. He does uh -oh. do it. All got... right. Our second all-in, ace-king offsuit versus ace-jack, Nicholas Ostet, of one of the, or if not the most successful high roller super millions dead. player in history, needs Drawing all dead. the luck in the world. Can he find running jacks? He found one. He's not going to find the second. David Yan and Nicholas Ostet out in ninth and eighth place. As you guys can see, we are the professionals. We both picked them. <laughs> well done, Nenonoko. We both look stupid. Hey, I have told people to bet on someone, and they've won some money. It's like, hey, I don't know if you have, but this week, they're probably like, yep, never going to listen to these two clowns again, like who they think are going to win. <laughs> There's definitely people out there who put some money, like, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna copy them. David Yen, Nicholas is dead. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, they looked all right. It's, I, I do think that it was a bit outrageous how much money was put on Nicholas. Over 200 individual betters, getting up to over 11k. Like, he just won it two weeks ago, coming in as a shorty. Like, how can you expect that to just happen again? Not even Nicholas Estet could possibly run that hot right hand. Yeah. Yeah. It's good yeah. to see that he can't win them all. For sure. Uh, by the way, uh, production says I have 15.86 points, and you have 5.2. So I've got a 10.66 lead on you so I'm not if worried. ducks wins we've got like 40 you don't catch up i know but nanonoko it's still only week 14 why are you making this a thing there we go see look pocket nines uh probably call i think got a lot of blinds hmm kind of a bad <laughs> flop but it looks like yep check Difficult, I think, for Romashka. Could fire one little bet, but if you then get called, probably just check, check, and pray somehow that you can get the showdown. Goes check, check on the flop. Turn is a six of clubs. The Ducks does still have a pair of sevens, but his hand is not looking any better. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bad run out for both players. A lot of two nines just trying to protect his hand. Gets called. How did the nines get value, dude? On queen, jack, seven, six, three clubs. Nice. I think Romashka is very surprised that he actually won the hand. After that 10 rolled off on the river too, he's like, all right, now I truly cannot beat a single hand. But actually, King 7 of Diamonds was one of the hands that you were able to beat. Man, I have no idea. Like, if you would take Tox out of the equation here, I have no idea who's going to win tonight. I think, like, all five of them could win it. Maybe MRDL is a bit less likely, but it's... Uh... Anybody's better game. jam this spot. 
hope he jams this. Like, no, nah, he checks. All right. I, th I think that would be a jam, right? I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. But get sometimes shot. you do Can't get trapped this. as well. Maybe he's been trapped a few too many times than an Oko. Oh, oh, my goodness. What is that turn? These luck boxes, man. Like, how? You can't do this to the Chinese it... guy. It's just disrespectful. Especially when you deal, deal the eight to him, right? That's his card. Juan Dominguez checks, though. And I do think that uh, Mr. DL is going to check it back and just see if he can find a three or a rib. Oh, the five is like <laughs> the only card that he didn't want to see. Now, he shouldn't lose all the chips on this or something, but... That's kind of sad because he's going to be somewhat happy seeing but the right. fight. Now Juan Dominguez is still going to bet into him. Yes. It's your birthday all over the place. I know. <laughs> I, know, no, no. I am aware of it. Two pair. That's a hard two pair to hit when you don't flop any of them. <laughs> the running eight, the running five. Juan Dominguez goes for a very tiny too. bet and he gets called. Man, what an ugly river for uh, Mr. DL. He's going to look at his hand and it's like, how did I just give you three big blinds? I should have jammed pre-flop. I could have jammed on the flop. Should have gone for one of these options. Juan Dominguez yeah. has ace-jack the following hand. He could still run it up, Nenonoko. I actually believe that tonight could be a Juan Dominguez night. I mean, I was... We said that in the pre-show, then when I saw the ace-jack versus ace-queen hand, I was thinking, this guy's out of the tournament already, and then now he's doing all right. I mean, he's not doing great, but you know, it's okay. Uh, I don't I think he's going to be fine. Gems ace-jack here for 20 big blinds and picks up a couple chippies. Pocket fours for the Ray guy. Mark Rodoya open. A stand. Pocket four skull, but Romashka has a four. So that's kind of disappointing. Do they still make a set though, Nenonoko? <laughs> Who knows? But you know, we lost all our star stud players. Two of yeah. them, at least. Well, the exciting ones. No, that's okay. We basically lost the two biggest names. Also, the two players that I think the most amount of money was bet on when it came to final table betting. Because David Jan was also over 6K. So I do apologize for anyone that followed the Roddy's pick of the week advice. But I I still like the play with the 10s. I think it was just unlucky that Ducks had Queens. But yeah, those are the plays yeah, that you expect a... him to make. And you will love to see it because you want to bet. If, if you want to bet on the smaller guy... He has to play for the win. And those kinds of plays are someone that plays for the win. Just a bit of a setup. Ducks putting pressure on Jack Four Clubs. Yeah, but to be fair, I'm I'm liking these uh these unknown names. They they really like they're still getting involved, um, which is random stuff. So I like it. I think we still got a good nice nice show. We got Ramashka still in there. A little producer. Makes all the women laugh. <laughs> That's the greatest little highlight video, mate. Like laughing lady on the right, laughing lady on the left, or like Ramashka having the time of his life. I could watch that all day. The, he he made that one girl really crack up. Like he, she was really cracking mm -hmm. up. I don't know what he said, but like <laughs> <laughs> I could make very inappropriate jokes, but I'm not gonna do it. Until I meet Ramashka once in real life, because then maybe I'm like, all right, I know what I can and cannot get away with. Ooh, pocket tens, okay. ace queen, ace queen. No, no, no go, fireworks. Mr. DL, he's going to get a nice, nice hand here, right? Like, how can ace queen win? It's literally impossible. There's two ace queens. Like, I've never seen the pocket pair lose in this spot. Like, never. I actually have not too long ago in uh, a pretty big tourney. Now, this is still a pretty tough decision for upswinger because upswinger may think... <laughs> That Mark Rodoya is calling yeah. hands that are a lot worse than Ace Queen. Legitimate tough hand. I was going to, th I, at first I thought, okay, well, you just fold because, you know, you just let the guy maybe bust that guy out. But he did shove only nine big blinds. So Mark could call mm -hmm. Ace Jack, Ace 10, pocket pairs. And even yeah. if Mark upswing, like, Mr. Dio has to beat both of them for him not to get a pay jump, you know? And, like, that's another. Mm -hmm. I can see Ace Queen going for it. Honestly, I I, I, I think I would it. go all in for it. Yeah, 
I wouldn't Especially fault the Florida. This is actually yeah. You need to think about this, but go ahead. I, I think because Mark is also a slightly bigger stack, uh, I actually think it makes sense to just go for it here as well. And I do think that Ace Queen in general is going to be better than what Mark Rodoya is calling with. Yeah, it, it's it's not a common spot. It is quite tricky though. I know why he's thinking. Like, mm -hmm. well, one he could be beat. Two, he could be flipping at best. Um, three, you know, maybe Mark just bust out Mr. DL. You know, like, there's a lot of reasons to fold. And there's a lot of, whatever he decides, I don't think it could be a wrong decision at all. Calls. That's the weirdest decision, though, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I actually kind of think that's the I worst find... decision. I, I agree with you, but now he does flop top pairs and now he's going to let Mark Rodoya bat and they're probably just going to chop it up. And Mr. DL, well, I apologize, Mr. DL, but Nenonoko said this never happens. It does happen. It is brutal when it happens. It feels bad. You know, I was thinking about a scenario like this the other day as obviously Upspring is going to call here. Like if he would fold now, that would be the craziest fold in history. So we're not even going to talk I about just... it. But yeah, we would just leave. <laughs> This is basically like going up against somebody that needs to hit a set and then they hit a set. Except for the fact that you're up against two sets, you know? Well, it's impossible to hit a set, though. Like That's the 10? Left, Nine? Right? Oh, my God, the 10 on the river. Oh, my goodness. Well, you did say it was impossible for him to lose, and he did lose. Uh, he did win it in the end. Wow, that's insane. What a run out. Upswinger gave him the you suck. Like, I think he legitimately means it. He's like, you kidding me? No pay jump. I lose half my stack somehow. And if he folded, he would have 500,000 more chips, too. Oh, what a funny hand. Nice. Chinese guy. <laughs> what a roller coaster as well, right? He's got two choices pre-flop. All in or fold. He decides to go with the call. Then does flop top pair. Obviously, he has to play for all the chips. Like, all right, well, at least we're going to chop it up. And I still get my pay jump. So this was a good decision. Ends up somehow losing half of his stack. I think out of all the things and scenarios that he went through, I'm going to lose half of my stack in this hand, but still be in the tournament was not one of them, Nanonoko. <laughs> yeah, definitely was one of the last ones I was thinking about, too. Hmm. Wait, what a hit. What a hit. The two outer on the river. Sixes we against throwing threes, sixes maybe? around everywhere. We keep seeing sixes, don't we? Yeah. Upswing a snap fold, though, after the Ray guy decides to open the ace 10 offset. Mr. DL's got nothing. Ducks could maybe play some 6 5 here from the small blind, especially because Romashka is not too much of a three better in the big blind. So I actually think you can call here and be fairly certain you'll see a flop for this price. Yeah, I think I, I agree. I mean, Ducks also plays a little bit more hands from the small blind in these spots, so I wouldn't be surprised. Wow, wow three folded. folded. What the? Threes. That was the weirdest fold I've ever seen. He just hates pocket threes, I think. Yeah, closing the action. Like, it feels like a dream there. Yeah. When you can just Rift throw stacks. in that extra big blind of, and some change. Yeah. One of the rare spots where you get to see a flop of threes, but all right, it's all good. Mm -hmm. he, correct fold, apparently. So far, Docs flops bottom pair. <laughs> That's a funny card. <coughs> Obviously, sixes make a full house. It's not the dream full house, but any full house is a pretty good one. Is the Ray guy still going to represent an overpair, or is he going to slow down? I think he should slow down. Oftentimes, he's up against eights and nines to flat from the small blind here, I think. Um, if he's betting, he's trying to, he's trying to fold out like ace jacks and ace queens. Doc still has a full house, but it is bottom full. I think he would love to see this just go check, check. I think now it's... Oh, wow. It's feisty, no? It's a bit feisty, especially the sizing, too. Yeah, I think he's just thinking, look, I'm a big stack. Maybe he's just going to read me into trying to muscle him away or call me with Ace King high or something. I don't know. But uh, he, he mixes up his game a lot, so 
it's actually quite uh, refreshing to watch. Mm -hmm. What a first hour for Ducks, man. He came in with 3.9. He's sitting at 6.1. David Yen and Nicholas Ostad are gone. Could you have wished for a better first hour if you're Ducks? <laughs> like, I don't think so. Mr. DL has had a good uh, last five minutes too, right? <laughs> I can't believe he sucked right, yes. out that pocket tens, man. I did not expect that. I, I, I'm pretty sure I said it was impossible, but I guess glitches do happen. You said it was impossible, but it turned out to be perhaps impossible because he did win the hand. Just don't ask us how we got there. But we have a bet and a call here. A7, 9, 10. Romashka still has a pair of nines. Mark Rodoya is defending his big blind with a suited ace. and Well, he's got to be feeling pretty good about that. Yeah, so bet and call. Um, it's kind of tricky with the ace six because, like, it could be beat by a better ace, but then you don't want to get free card to like a nine eight type hand. He's gonna fire. Nice bet. I don't think it's like always an easy bet to make. Could be kind of scary, but no, it's not very easy. Very good bet. It's it's tricky. Good fold. Tricky, but gets the job done. Mark Rodoya wins a few chippies, and that is going to do it for our first hour. We've lost two players, but not any two players. We lost David Yen and Nicholas Ostet. Nananoka's pick of the week, Roddy's pick of the week. We suck, but you guys are awesome. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done that yet. We'll take a very quick break, and after that, we'll be back with the second hour of Week 14, Season 2 of our Weekly 10K. Hi, I'm the new Daniel Negreanu, and I'm the old Daniel Negreanu. We both represent online poker sites. We both love Hold'em. I mean, we're basically the same person. Absolutely, man. I used to love watching you play, the way you would read people, call out their hands, and then, of course, call anyway. Oh, stop. I'm blushing. But old Daniel, man, I got to ask, man, what uh, what's up with this look you got going on here? You you tired or something? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of all these freaking beats I've been taking. It's freaking ridiculous. Look at this motherfucker. Hand. This motherfucker is calling the fucking turn with this piece of in hand. Fucking absurd. Whatever. I, I don't even know why I'm so upset. I mean, bad beats, they're just part of the game, right? I mean, they don't really have to be. You see that? I took a bad beat, then GG Care took care of some of my losses. Hashtag, thanks GG. You think uh, maybe I could borrow that laptop and play a little while? No, definitely not. Just say GG to that site you're playing on over there. You just think you're so clever. Nope, just a good read. GG, poker star. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.
Welcome back to the second hour of week 14, season two, where it seems like Nananoko is still grabbing himself some coffee, but that's okay since it's 6 a.m. for him. We're just going to hold down the fort. We lost two players, but two very big names. A lot of you guys at home believed in David Jan and Nicholas Estet. Wasn't meant to be for them today. Perhaps it is Romashka's time, or will it just be Dox, who has taken a pretty commanding chip lead over the rest of the table? Romashka will win the first hand, though. It was kind of a slow first hour, but we did have a couple of fun hands. As Nanonoko found himself some bottled water. I thought you would go for coffee, Nano. Huh. Don't think you could hear me yet. Nanonoko, okay, going for up? bottled water again? It's not bottled, it's canned, dude. Can't you tell the difference? Okay, the can. That's what I meant. Yeah, I was thirsty. I was, I was going to be on time, but I was like, I'm really thirsty. I need to go get some drink. What do you make of our first hour so far? Other than Ducks playing clearly very solid and having a very good first hour, we lost two of the biggest names. Anything else that stood out for you? Um, to be honest, Ducks is the one controlling the action. He's the guy we've seen involved the most pots. We're learning the most about him. Um, and he's very tricky. He's got some different moves that other people don't. So other than that, like, I haven't seen Ray Guy play any hand. I've seen Upswinger three bet some spots, which I think are good spots. And also the Ace Queen was a funny hand against <laughs> Ace Queen, Ace Queen tens. But other than that, like, I haven't learned too much about some of the other guys. Mark's been playing pots, but kind of like Mark and Juan Dominguez actually play quite similar right today. They mm -hmm. have a lot of checks in their game, you know, like kind of like cautious checks or trappy checks. I don't know what you call them, but yeah, other than that, uh, it really is ducks that stand out and only ducks to me. I do want to apologize one more time for us being a bit pixelated, especially me, but even Nano is a bit pixelated every now and then. It is not on my end, guys. I can't change it, but at least you guys can hear me. So I guess that's the most important part. Mark Rajoya has ace queen offsuit here. Under the gun. I don't think he's going to get too much action. I would love to see Romashka defend though. 10 8 of clubs closing the action. Why not? Not a bad flop. Not great, but it, uh, a little. It's playable. Yeah. Yeah, but if your opponent's holding ace queen, you're just thinking like, okay, how's the ace queen gonna? What's, how's he gonna win this pot? Was he gonna bet the flop? The ten eight's gonna call, you know? It goes check, check, turn. Ramasha's probably gonna win this one, in my opinion. Yeah, a bet that small. I do think we have to call. We've got some clean outs towards the nuts. Any pair would be nice. We do make a pair. Obviously, any club would have been decent too. Romashka takes the lead. He doesn't know that. wonder what Mark Rodoya does after betting so small on the flop. It's either we bet a lot bigger or we check, right? Uh, you can't really bet this card with ace-queen, in my opinion. Uh, because, especially for, against a guy like Romashka, because Romashka from the big blind, check calls suited connectors so a lot of them have either two pair like seven eight or they've got a pair in a straight draw eight nine just forced to mend or call turn so betting ace queen on the turn is almost like just burning chips unless you're intending to fire the river too mm -hmm. michael adamo um, would have bet <laughs> he finds bets in the weirdest spots um but i always work that well guy, you were I don't correct know. about you know? romashka winning the hand Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I don't remember like when the last time we spoke with her, but he won like three tournaments in a row. Oh, hold on. I'll talk later. Ace, king, queen. Yep. Mr. DL has ace, king. Romashka does have a king, but Mark Radoya in the big blind has pocket queens. And this is probably going to be one for all the marbles. Queens are always ahead. They are a bit further ahead when Romashka also folds a king. Still scary though. But Mr. DL... Doesn't kill people or sharing cards. Like he's just gonna hit some stuff. I'm feeling the Chinese guy. I don't know why. I'm feeling the he queens. Didn't lose those... He didn't lose those two tens. What makes you think he's gonna lose this hand? Like he had because no Romashka chance. Because Romashka folded a king, and and queens are already ahead. I don't know why he's taking his time. I feel like there is no decision here. You just have to call with ace king. If we're not, if we're folding this, then we're folding pretty much everything. <laughs> that's not aces or kings. 
Well, I guess he's looking at upswinger stack then, right? Like that's the only thing I can think right. of. Seven and a half big blinds. I know, like I'm not. But still, I'm not personally not folding but this. But still, <laughs> like he should have just opened jammed in, right? Oh, wow, he's thinking folding about it. Would be so crazy. I don't think he's <laughs> you know gonna lose funny, that hand, right? but I also think he should absolutely go all in. Go ahead. What is funny? I played a lot of in uh, tournaments in Macau. And the Chinese people mm -hmm. actually hate Ace King. They are like scared to death of Ace King for some. They just keep limping it, and then like maybe limp folding, limp jam, like just like they always limp Ace King for some reason. I'm not saying this guy's those players, but like the Chinese are. They, I don't know. I think it's a culture thing or something. And he's thinking about it right now, Ace King and in, in the muck. Are you? He's not gonna fold it, is he? It's a tiny. I mean, if he I'm takes twenty through. more seconds, I may actually expect him to fold. But I don't. Oh, oh my goodness! My he folded. God. What? I mean, it could be the correct choice because I don't think he was going to win the hand. But that's still insane. Ace Queen of Diamonds for Juan Dominguez and Mark Rodoya has pocket eights. Wow! 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 Ready? Wow! I know. Oh, interesting. I mean, I think you're supposed to call there, but I wonder, is there ever a case where maybe you're supposed to fold because upswinger is short? But upswinger needs to have like a couple less big blinds, I think, to be folding there. Like, say upswinger sitting yes. on three or four big blinds. I can get behind it for sure because he's auto get in real soon. But here, mm -hmm. not really. He could be waiting. He could double up. He could be waiting around. He's got fold equity. Yeah. I don't know, man. He's got seven big blinds. Pocket eights will make the call. The flop is king nine nine. So eights are still good, but obviously Juan Dominguez has a lot of ways to win this hand. I don't think we hate this flop, right? For pocket eights. We don't hate it. We don't love it. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, pair board is pretty good for pocket eights usually. But the annoying part is you can't get counterfeited on this one. You know, like the king rolls mm -hmm. off. But, you know, I, the three I is told a great you, though, card. Juan Dominguez. Because... Yeah, this is a good card. But I'm saying these two guys like to check. They don't see bet that much. So, like, mm -hmm. because we've only been watching for an hour, and I've seen a lot from both of these guys. I'm just thinking I'm going to defend more the big line against them, thinking I get more free cards. Well, Mark does feel that his eights are good here, so he goes for a little bet. 1.8 big blinds by the looks of it. Juan Dominguez with ace, queen of diamonds. Would have had an easy decision if that was the three of diamonds, but... Ace Queen suddenly doesn't look that good anymore. Does make the call. The 10. It like looks promising, but obviously it doesn't change anything. The pocket eights are still good here, but it's very hard for Mark Rodoya to actually be aware of the fact that his eights are still good. It's like specifically ace jack or ace queen is what you hope you're dropping. Hmm. I don't think he thinks the ace queen is good though. Because like yeah, man, it's probably flatter from the small blind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he can only, at best, chop when he checks. Even then, Ace Queen probably wouldn't bet the turn to Tiny. Juan should be betting. Yep. I think. Um, His opponent could have, like, a Jack-10. Probably can't really call if you throw a big bet out there. Mm. I would like to see a bet, but... No, maybe Juan's still wondering how often his opponent has like a king queen, king jack. Wow. A pot size bet. Yeah, I like this, man. You gotta go big. But he's yep. he's repping thin though, I'll tell you, man. This guy's like he's repping nice. tense. <laughs> Good. Very well done there by Juan Dominguez. Betting ten big blinds on the river. Pot size bet, taking it down with ace queen high. Gets Mark Rodoya to fold the best hand. This is a very annoying for the Ray guy because he doesn't want to give any chips to Upswinger, but with eight dudes, you can't do too much. So he lets it go, and Upswinger, his wildest dreams come true. Not just getting a walk, but getting a walk with five dudes offsuit. That's basically like a double. <laughs> Blinds go up. Right. Big blind now 70k. We are still with seven players. It's a, it's a difficult uh, blind level for me to calculate, so I won't will not be trying. 
I like I have no idea how many problem. blinds Juan Dominguez has right now. Like, how how do you know? It's, it's impossible. Well, you do. It. No, no, it's really not that impossible. Because ten times seven TK is obviously seven hundred K. So twenty big blinds is one point four million, and he's got one seven four three. So it's between twenty and thirty, and it's a bit less than average. So it's twenty four. Wow, and he just jams the nines. Gotta love it. Yeah. It does take some work to figure out, though. It's not simple. It is not simple, but it's also not rocket science. Let's keep it at that. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So we know Mr. DL may be a little tight, right? So I'm just actually curious what he does with his 10 8 suit here. Like, I think he, limps. he just folds. Uh, yeah, oh. he just folds. Because yeah, I, I limp's the standard, right? But I'm just thinking, look, he's thinking. Chip Lee has been aggressive. If I limp, he's just gonna raise me. Why not? Why waste a small blind? Feels like everybody is waiting for upswinger, but upswinger is waiting for everybody else, and here we are. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. A man who doesn't like to wait is Romashka, and he does decide to defend King Nine. Superstar pair has backdoor hearts too. Obviously, never ever folding here, but may even consider the real race. Ooh, that's a good turn card. So, what else is new, Nanoko? As Romashka will absolutely win this hand. Both players do make a nine on the river, but the Ray guy will probably just try to check it down and hope that his nine is good. Uh, is there anything else that has been happening in your life? Anything fun you've watched in the world of poker? Something you want to talk about? I feel like you're holding back today. I don't know what it is, but I'm missing something there. <laughs> well, I, I was going to uh, let's see anything here. Let me. Well, hold on a second. We got we got something here. Little jacks. The jiggities. Snap call. Damn it! Come on, Romashka. Re raise. Sometimes you play too fast. You got to re raise this one. I mean, we saw Anatoly also flat call a lot with hands like jacks and even queens, which I was really surprised True. by. But obviously, I am not going to doubt Anatoly his uh, ability of how to play <laughs> No Limit tournaments because that man has had a pretty all right summer. I think we can all agree upon that. Yeah, that seems to be they a both, thing these they're days. They're both from Russia. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. they get a little like chitty chatty on how to play. I don't think so. They play completely different, though. <laughs> Check, check. So Juan's been checking. Beat bets now. Feels almost criminal to Jax, though, after checking the flop and only a single overcard. But yeah, you don't love it when your opponent bets into you, especially because it's quite big. A three of diamonds rolls off on the river. Pot now a little over a million chippies. Romashka will definitely check it and just pray that Juan Dominguez decides to check it back. And Juan may be a bit concerned now, right? Like you could say that this spot is big enough the way it is and just be happy that you can win a million chips. Yeah, he agrees. I think it makes sense. With that kicker too, it's hard to get called by worse. So I like that mm -hmm. check. I think it's really pretty standard to be honest. Um, I was going to ask, did you... Because uh, I don't remember, it's been a while since we talked because like, we had these breaks. Did you know Michael Dama won three big tournaments in a row? No, um, I did not know that he won three in a row. Okay, I know so he won one, but I didn't know he won three in a row. So he he flew down to, to Las Vegas to play that uh, Poker Go like Purple Jacket series. But he showed up late. So I think it's like a leaderboard, maybe 10 big tournaments, 50K, 25K, 100K, whatever. He shows up late. Mm -hmm. He wins the 50k. I want to say for like a million something. Shows up. It wins the 100k the next day for like a million something. And then, so it, then he wins the purple jacket for winning. He won the player of the series for that. I'm not sure. Something might happen here, actually. Yeah, yeah. I think Upswinger is all in with Ace Jack Offset. Like, I feel like if Upswinger doesn't jam this, then I don't really know what we are waiting for anymore. Like Nananoko, he's playing less than five big blinds. Or with the small blind included, he is playing exactly five big blinds. An ace jack against one eight, a cutoff open. One ace is dead too, Roddy. Yeah, I don't think he's going to win, but I think you have to jam here. And he does agree. GG. Here we go. Can Upswinger find one of the last two aces or a trip jacks? Nope, that's a very bad flop. 
Needs an ace. Oh, there's oh. the ace. My goodness. What? What? These guys, man. Any paint? Come out of nowhere. Mark Rodoya should hit I'm him so with the confused. you suck because because he used the uh, you suck on Mr. DL. I feel like now you got to use the you suck in return. But Mark's too nice, apparently. Mark's, Mark's been unlucky. But I was going to say, so he won the 50K. Then he wins the 100K. Mm -hmm. This is back-to-back -back tournaments. like, And there's like no days apart, really. He wins the purple jacket for player of the series for that. He show, it doesn't even show up for the first half of the series and comes and shows up for the last two tournaments, wins it, wins the player of the series, purple jacket. These are the tournaments that Daniel Negreanu keeps playing and stuff, right? Uh, like the yeah, one yeah, in yeah. Cyprus that happened. Then it's the super high roller bowl, like the one in the, you know, the one limitless one in Cyprus not too long ago. He mm -hmm. wins that mm -hmm. for like three point. So he wins 5.5 million in the span of, I don't know, one week or two weeks or whatever it took. For that tournament to win, that that's what he's been doing, literally. And that's what you've been doing as well, just trying to keep up through uh, with Michael Adamo and living vicariously through Michael Adamo. <laughs> I'm always thinking like I can, I know what he's doing, and then when I'm in the tub, like just fold these hands, man. They're never gonna, go. <laughs> like I'm just gonna play like a nit, you know. But uh, yeah, Adamo is is super sick, and plus. You know how like you know how crazy he is online, right? He's yes. just as crazy live, man. Like it doesn't matter to buy in. He he just really just sticks it sticks it to you, man. He's just the most fun player to watch. I think I think he gained the lands over the time, especially probably because of the super millions, right? Because people the people the regs know about him, they know he's crazy, right? But the people who don't know him that much like i think he's just a random guy a little bit like another internet guy but not i think he's become like a fan favorite for a lot of people mm -hmm. and if he keeps going on like this i really think that he's going to be just one of the standout names of this generation just like nicholas stat obviously is at this point right i feel whatever article you read on the internet where people are talking about great internet players at the moment they will talk about nicholas stat you see his name everywhere this could be a fun hand with juan dominguez having ace deuce of clubs the Ray guy has bottom pair. He's got some back door, so okay. Well, that's um, not, not a good card for him. He may think that's a decent card. He's like, well, it's still low, and I pick up a god of ball, but that's a very bad card. Yeah, well, Juan is gonna bet because when this card rolls off on the turn, you actually think the big blind has got a piece of a good piece of this, like whether it's like a mm -hmm. two pair or like a 10, nine and eight, seven. And I like the small bet because if you bet too big, maybe those like ace, eight will fold, try and get those hands to call. But he actually has one of the hands that actually will just lay it down. Mm -hmm. The Ray guy has a check as he is becoming one of uh, the absolute shortest stacks now. He came in fourth place, right? Or no, second even. The Ray guy came in second tonight with 2.2 .2 million chips. So it wasn't a crazy amount of chips or something, but it feels kind of bad when there are seven people left and suddenly you are the second shortest. Ray guy is, he's been kind of tight today though, hasn't he? Like I feel, well, I'm not sure how he lost all his chips. Maybe just bleeding slowly, like 300K, yeah, yeah. 400K. Yep. That's what it's been. He never lost too much, but definitely. I mean, he did just lose. Uh, no, that wasn't even him. That was Mark Rodoya. Kings. Kings against Ace Jack. The Ray guy's just getting unlucky, man. <laughs> Upswinger as our absolute shorty with Jack 9 in the small blind versus Juan Dominguez, who has Jack 4 offset in the big blind. Ooh, I like it. Bam. Takes courage, but just jams the Jack-9 offsuit, steals the big blind, and wins the anties. Well done. Yeah. So what else is happening, Roddy? I mean, it's all, like, honestly, like, I look at Twitter, like, that's where I get a lot of my updates. And just, like, people talking about World Series, of course, and people talking about crypto mm -hmm. and JPEGs. That's pretty much all I see on my Twitter feed nowadays. I don't know. And you, I mean, you're coming Ever from since... a gaming background, so you see more stuff. Yeah, I've been trying to uh, learn a little more about the NFTs after Limitless was talking about it and you were talking about it too when somebody had like a little penguin or something and I was like, I don't really know. And to be honest, the more I read about it, the more confused I am. But I sort of get it. I don't really understand why some are so valuable. But maybe one day it will all make sense.
instance. We do have a bet and a call here, by the way. Mr. DL flopped a5 and obviously has the not flush draw too. And the Ray guy just tried to take it down with his little gut shot. Seven of mm. diamonds is going to feel Mr. make Mr. DL feel really good. I wonder what he does. I think he's going to bet really small, Nano, because he wants to get called or raised. Yeah, he should bet small because it's hard for the Ray guy to have a four and a cutoff of that stack size. Plus, it's also hard for his opponent to have a queen to check this turn card. So I do like the smaller sizing mm -hmm. here and just hoping for something. I uh, did read on Twitter, I'm sure you read those tweets too, as I believe that was one of the hands that uh, Daniel Negreanu played against Michael Adamo, right? In the big one. Oh, where, yeah. Uh, yeah. Michael Adamo had a straight and people it? were upset with Daniel. Daniel, been, that's the problem. When you, solve, when you solve too much, you make some calls knowing you're going to be, be beat, you know, because you're thinking, uh, well, my solver says the call here. But yeah, that was a big one. That was like level one of the tournament. First 15 minutes of that super high rollable that Michael Dumbo did end up winning. The courtesy of Daniel Negreanu, you know. Uh, yeah, he lost like 300 big blinds in that hand. And it actually went check, check on the flop. How do you lose 300 big blinds when it goes check, check on one street? <laughs> and and it's a paired board and no one has a full house. Like, how? And one guy just has top pair. I know. I know. I read about it. Yeah, that's kind of it. I don't know. I've been watching some streams. Uh, I was personally very busy with StarCraft. We still have one more busy week. This week we are wrapping up a tournament series. So then I will be uh, a little more dedicated again to poker. But I couldn't do anything anyway. Whenever I feel like I can't play, then I get a bit bored. And at least I got to play my first uh, live hands again last Saturday. But it wasn't for too long because I was out with my mom and grandma. And I didn't want to keep them up till 2 or 3 a.m. So, But it was really fun to finally yeah. just sit at a poker table again and get dealt some cards, have some chips in my hand. First hand, I had ace 10, and I flat called some guy who opened, and I flopped up too, and I was like, yeah, welcome back, baby. <laughs> it was a good time. Oh, nasty, huh? Like, So mm -hmm. Chip Leader is making it big into your big blind. You know he's trying to steal from you. He actually picks up a hand, and you flop mid-pair, not flush back door. Oh, check. I'm real surprised by that, Roddy. This, this is my... It feels like a player-dependent move. Like, he's just trying to trap Ramashka. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dox has check. just shown us a lot of variety tonight in his play. And it's been absolutely working out for him so far. We do expect him, of course, to put a lot of chips in Ooh. now. And he goes for an almost pot-sized bet. This has to be really confusing to Ramashka. Yeah. The problem is Ace-9 is just good here so often, especially against a big chip leader kind of guy. I, I don't mind the call. It's, it's His opponent has a lot of draws, to be honest. If you're Ducks here and you do get called, are you a bit concerned or are you still convinced that you have the best hand? I'm not concerned. It's kind of like if you've got me, you got me. If you got the six seven, the nine seven, just take all my chips. But I'm just going for value town. Wow. That is a lot of value town. Wow. The line this is, is funny too. Yeah. yeah. This is the most time we're watching going to use. Just to point that out now. Will Romanchka hmm. convince himself that his opponent is bluffing or will he just let go of what is, at the end of the day, just a pair of nines? But if you truly believe that your pair of nines is good, this suddenly feels like the opportunity of a lifetime to become the new chip leader. It's truly hell or glory, right? It's either you're the new chip leader or you're out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he's thinking about this. Um... Let's see on Let's Twitch. See on hey, Twitch. <laughs> I like that. Yes, Romashka. Well done. My man. I thought he was going to wait 10 minutes. I'm like, we have a 30 minute delay, Romashka. I'm like, it's uh, it's going to take a little while. The Ray guy, as one of the shortest stacks, is going to open up with Ace 8 of Diamonds under the gun. I actually kind of like it. Looks very strong when you open up from that stack. So he wins some much needed chippies. And at least everyone has over a million again. What if Ramashka goes, let's let's see it now. And he calls. <laughs> you know, like, like, I cannot wait that long. But uh... 
Yeah, good fault by Romashka. I mean, I, I don't hate yeah. the fact that he called on the turn, even though it was a very big bet. And I gotta say, though, pretty insane shove by Docs on the river in the end. Like, I ask you, would you be concerned? Because it's kind of funny whenever you bet big because you have a really good hand. You want to get called, but then you do get called, you're like, oh. Because <laughs> there are a lot of hands that would beat him, obviously. But well done. Docs is playing I think really it was, good. I think it was excessive. But not like, I think he's he's getting folds a lot. That's why I think he should have went smaller with that ace queen. I don't think he's he should be worried about beating, but yeah, that's what I thought about. So you think on the river bet maybe another 500k or 600k? Even like a million, 1.1, like something like where... Yeah. A lot of guys don't like to like hero call off their tournament life on a hero call, you know? Like some guys do, but like it, it definitely decreases uh, at final tables. But I don't know. It's not it's not a misplay by any means, but uh, just no, of course not. something to think about. It's fun to talk about these hands, Nedanarko. I feel like tonight it's been a little hit or miss when it comes to the action. So when we do have fun hands, I think we can talk about it for a little bit. Docs did flop top pair here on this monotone board, all spades. The turn is another spade. I don't think either player gets very excited over that. Juan Dominguez could represent it, though. Maybe a little bit better than Docs could, but... We got the... The checky triangle here. Ducks, Juan Dominguez, and, and Mark Rodoya. They just love to check and they're sitting in triangle. Surprised. People not see betting today. Keep checking in. I wonder if Juan Dominguez will bet here. Like he may think that a mm. six could be good once in a while, but I feel like it's kind of unlikely. Yeah, it is good once in a while. I think it is okay to check. Wouldn't fault him if he turned his hand to a bluff. But he can probably just do that with any other hand, right? Like, just bluff with anything but a six. Like, just air. Mm -hmm. Might as well just show down the ones that maybe win sometimes. You know, uh, these jackpots, by the way, on GG, like, before you used to get a uh, best hand jackpot, right? Or a big hand jackpot, they call it, excuse me, where you have, like, quads with straight mm -hmm. flushes on the regular table. Sure. Now they have turned it into the bad beat jackpots, but they are so big. I follow one of the guys that I played PLO with. I just met him on GG, but uh, we were friendly with each other because we were both bluffing a lot and bantering a bit. So I, I followed him on Insta, and he was on one of these tables the other day of a 510, and I think he was on the winning end of a bad beat jackpot, and they got like 38,000 or something playing 510, like 38K bad beat jackpot. is so yeah. sick. It's so does a monstrous. guy who loses get even more, or how does how much do he get? Yeah, yeah, any yeah. Idea? Yeah, like over sixty k. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, it's Did... and then the rest of the table also still got like four k as table share just to be part of the hand. It's uh, really fun. <laughs> I have not obviously been part of any yet myself, but I'm looking forward to the day that I'm uh, on the right or wrong end of some bad beats. You know, maybe some quad fours beating quad aces, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds, that's a really big payday. Um, damn. Go, go, go. <laughs> mm. Ooh. All right, fade it. Uh, but Mark might just check this flop. Like, he, he's, he's a checker. Duck's a checker. Juan Dominguez is a checker. I think you're going to get no. another turn card, Roddy. You feeling good? I don't think Mark is checking this one. Check kind of wild. You have they Jacks and Jack of Diamond. No. Yeah, what? they just keep checking, Rowdy. If you get a free card, don't complain. What happened? Okay, if the four of diamonds would roll off on the river, Romashka would win it all. <laughs> it would be know, fun, kind oh, of funny. He would win a good amount. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. I guess we don't go super crazy with the Jack of Diamonds. I, I kind of meant he would win it all with his hand because obviously on the flop, the Four of Diamonds would be no good for him. But now that the board is spared, the Four uh, of Diamonds is good. So you yeah. went from one outs to two outs. <laughs> True. But I guess he probably has to fold this now. Um, even you if you're good, ace, Jack and ace King, though. Oh, he's actually she called. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, like, even if you're good here, your opponent has a lot of outs against you. Mm -hmm. And if you're behind, well, you're dead. Yeah, obviously, if another eight or a queen rolls off, it's also 
not too pretty, but at least the trees are under the force. Anyway, Romashka loses a few more chippies. But he's still hovering a million, so it's not too bad. We've got King Jack suited and King wow. Jack suited. And look at Ducks, the power of a chip leader. And that was quick as well, Nananoko. He didn't think about that for a second. Yeah, that was super fast. And it's a lot of jam, a lot of chips to jam, right? Because 30 big blind effective for Juan Dominguez is just like some muscle. He plays That's pretty the quick. second biggest stack. Gee, Ray guy plays fast, but maybe because he doesn't play a hand. The sick thing is that Juan Dominguez is actually the second biggest stack at this table as well. And Docs just treated him like <laughs> he's a shorty. <laughs> well, we, we've been treating him like a shorty because I'm pretty sure he's been like sitting on 20 big blinds for a long time. What the hell happened? 2.7 million. He's been chipping up. Juan Dominguez has been grinding. And, uh, mate, don't forget, by the way, that Juan Dominguez, when we had 20 players left in this tournament, <laughs> was down to one big blind. For the people that missed the pre-show, but Juan Dominguez, after losing a hand, I believe against Romashka, but I can look that up again, was down to one big blind. 40,000 chips when the big blind was 40k. And he has now ran it up to 2.6 million. Would this stop Lucas Greenwood, Nananoka? Oh, 100% it would. Like, uh, we've doubled the blind since that game because it was 40,000 big blind when it happened. Now it's 40,000 small blind. He's collected many pay jumps since then because that wasn't even final table. Um, so, like, say he was guaranteed like 15K, you know, like, he's guaranteed what? 83, oh, my goodness. Three is that? And probably oh, ace jack, 10, ace jack, ace jack, and 10s. And ace nine. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, I did. you could actually say that this is a spot for Ace-9 to jam normally. A little over uh, 11 big blinds. He oh, will let it go. Right. And he can be very, very happy with that decision. Because it would have been real hard to flop an Ace. Juan Dominguez is going to raise it up, though. And then Mr. Download may decide to go all-in. But he doesn't strike me as an all-in kind of guy wow. with Ace-Jack. Docs, though, is just going to call. And the 10s are still good. Wow. And he leads in with the tens, man. These guys are just throwing us for curveballs. I was expecting some all-in confrontation somewhere, right? Because that was definitely a pre-flop all-in for somebody. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Now we got leading and fold. Just the okay. smallest pot possible for a pot where it should have been two million chips in the middle somewhere. Yep, could have been a triple knockout, but instead it's a. Uh... A one bet into a fault. I just found the hand again, by the way. It was David Jan against Juan Dominguez when the blind level was 20k versus 40k. Ace Queen beating Ace 9. And Juan Dominguez was left with 40,000 big blinds. Literally one big blind. So not almost one big blind, but literally one big blind. And he has somehow ran it up from 40k <laughs> to 2.6 million. I want to see every hand, to be honest. I want to see, like, the first three hands after he went down to one big line. Isn't it funny? Because David Yan is out before Juan Dominguez now, too. Like, yeah. that's yeah. the thing. I don't know if you're aware, but these guys, these regs, they've been leaving one chip behind, like, one big blind whenever they go all in. Uh, they do that a lot in live poker uh, because, like, you know, they can run it up in case they're wrong and they're bluffing. And they, like... Juan Dominguez left himself with one chip, allowed him to continue the tournament. And also, David Yan could have just jammed the river and not leave his opponent one chip. And he would, you know, everything would be different. Butterfly effect. Like, that one chip leaving behind thing these regs do. Yeah. It's ridiculous. No, you're actually right. Because Juan Dominguez was the one who actually bet 582,000. While he could have just bet 620k, but he bet 582. We have an all-in oh, and a look. call here, by the way. The Ray guy is ahead, but he needs to avoid aces, kings, and queens. If he does that, he is good. And that's not an ace, a king, or a queen. So the Ray guy gets a double. He gets up to 1.4 million chippies. Very unfortunate for Romashka losing ace, king, against king tender. What happened to my pick? Didn't he have like 3 million chips? Like, I was feeling good. He made what a heroic ace-9 call against ace-queen. That's what happened. Yeah, but that wasn't his fault. <laughs> he got cooler than the hand. And I'm getting like, what, 13 to 1, I think, or something? And now he's yeah. sitting on a short stack? God damn it. I'm even more mesmerized about the run of Juan Dominguez now. 
the fact that he is the one who bet <laughs> 580k on that river and left himself with one big blind. And you know how many chips David Yen had after that hand? What? He had 3.5 million. So David Yen had 3.5 million chips. Juan Dominguez had 40k. And now David Yen is out in ninth place and Juan Dominguez is second in chips. Sure. Should we send this memo over to David Yen? No, that this guy just had one big blind. He took you. Oh, I guess he would know. He would remember. I'd be salty. If he would have just pisses me off. If he would have just instead of calling, if he would have just gone for it, Juan Dominguez would have called because he did have an ace in that hand. Yeah. No, it's not like he's gonna fold for forty k. <laughs> oh my goodness! Ooh, tens, ace, jack, king, jack, and ace, king. Couple funny hands, King Jack obviously into the muck quickly, but Mr. Download, we saw him fold Ace King before after somebody three bet him. This is gonna jam it all in. I don't think we can fold tens though. <laughs> Excuse me, bless me. Well, there we go. Dox goes for it. Romashka, let's go of Ace Jack. We are off. A classic flip. Ooh, that's oh. a funny one, but it's a great one for Dox. He just needs to avoid Jacks. If the river is not paint, we are down to six. It is not paint. Quads? No, nine. Obviously, there's already ten of hearts on the board. There are not two ten of hearts in the deck, guys. So Dox gets another one. And Nanonoko, does Dox have more chips than the rest of the table combined? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Does he? That's my guess. I don't know. I'm going to take a look. But yes, he does. Easily, even. Easily. My goodness. Mr. DL... We'll maybe look back at that hand where he folded Ace King, even though he was up against Queen, so that would have been a flip too. But that was quite the fault. Man, so he Dox got the same position there. then, if he had busted out that yep. hand, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And upswing is still in, and he actually went from 450k to 900k ever since. Oh my goodness. Our Finnish man, who came in as chip leader, is uh, running like a god. And obviously playing very well, too. Yeah. Just, like, never had any spots where he went down so far, right? Like, your pick to win, Roddy. Like, do I congratulate you now or just a little bit later, Roddy? Like, can we can we throw in a little curveball? Can we shake things up a bit? Because this is not fun when the chip leader just keeps winning. Magradoya jams sixes in the small blind here after Romashka opens from the button. Romashka may be steaming a little bit, and I feel like he's even considering a call. He doesn't have that much behind, but he will let go of it. <laughs> Shows the ace. He's, he's not that ridiculous. Come on. Well, sometimes they like do jam Romashka... like the queen. The... Yeah. Queen Jack suited, King Queen suited, King Jack suited. Sometimes oh, they yeah. do jam that from the small blind. True. But Ramashka, he's not as crazy. He's probably crazier during rebuy registration open, you know, stuff like that. Like final tables, you know, he's like, all right, they're watching Ooh. me. Okay, A7, A10. No, no. Great guy. Yep. Very quick, very quick call by Juan Dominguez. He was convinced that Ace 10 would be the best hand here, and it is. Obviously a nine or a three, and we chop Drawing. it up. A seven. The Ray guy dead, wins dude. it all. He can't win this. Yeah. Oh my no. god, he chopped it. Chopped it. He can't win this. I, Please, he chopped it. I love that I say <laughs> with a nine or a three, they chop, and you're like, he's practically dead, dude. And I'm like, and he's got aces the next hand. I don't think he's going to win too much. I'm showing a hit sauce with a so sick because he wanted that pay jump. Obviously, that's a pretty big one. 28K guaranteed if the Ray guy would have gone out there. Also pretty sad for Juan Dominguez, but I don't think he can complain too much if he thinks back of the moment where he had one big blind. <laughs> yeah, no. Can you imagine? He's got to be told that the rest of the tournament. Like, don't complain when you get cracked because you had yeah, one big blind. Yeah. You can flop quads and still go out and do not complain, okay? <laughs> Tricky. Oh, folds. Mm -hmm. That's kind of funny. Dox is showing him that he folded 10 9 suited, and Upswing is like, I had a 9 too. <laughs> I like it. Well, some drama with the Ray guy escaping death there. Chopping A7 versus A10. 
It does feel like the storming, doesn't it? <sighs> All right. So, do you think he's C best this time? Because I usually been checking lately. I know he's got period. All right, he's gonna throw out the minimum though. It's almost a check. I don't hate it because Ace King is supposed to be good for his range, right? Raising from a middle position, but he actually hated that flop. But then you just go for the tiny bet. If sevens jam here, though, he could be in serious trouble if the eights of ducks will call. And uh, ducks doesn't really strike me as a guy who likes to fold pocket pairs when he's got 8.7 million chips. Sevens go for it. You think he calls, Nano? Mm. Yeah. Oh, Holy no. <laughs> I thought he would. But to be fair, upswing has been kind of tight ever since, I don't know, whatever happened earlier. I think eights could, but like he's got so many chips. What's the worst that can happen? Well, that he loses 800k. <laughs> yeah, I guess, but I'm a little surprised. A little snug. Yeah. Over the, it. Maybe he just likes, knows. maybe he likes the dynamic of multiple short stacks where he's like, all right, I can just raise a lot of hands. I can jam a lot of hands. I will not get called and I can just win more chips mm. like that rather than potentially flipping for 1.6 million. Yeah, no, I Which can, I, I can see that. Just, yeah. But I was just Ooh. saying like, say he does double his opponent. It actually doesn't change that much because everyone's still sitting on 20, 12. I don't know. This is just a slaughter. I don't know. I'm just looking at the stacks of everyone. <laughs> like, yeah. poor Juan Dominguez out of position against the guy of all the chips, too. Like, he's the guy you expect to maybe put some resistance. All in with the Knights. <laughs> with 29 big blinds. <laughs> yeah. We are going to raise it up a little bit, though. I know. Juan will let it go. You know, in the previous round, Juan Dominguez got a walk on his big blind with pocket jacks, but Still, you are not allowed to complain, Juan Dominguez. You had one big blind before, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to mention at least five more times. <laughs> Absolutely. If he gets heads up and he grinds all the way back to 50-50 and gets it all in with aces against ace-10 offsuit and he loses, he can still not complain. <laughs> Ooh, Mark Rodoya <laughs> might call you, though. Oh. Small blind against big blind, Nenonoko. King-queen? I think I call... Well, it's definitely a chip mm -hmm. EV call. I guess I would call, man. Ramash is jamming worse. King Jack, Queen Jack, nice. and all he sorts calls. of other stuff. Yeah. Here we go. Yep. Marco Dyer still needs to find a king or a queen, though. He is behind against the ace high of Romashka. Do we get paint on the river? Paint? But it's a jack. We do. My goodness, the tease. The tease of the <laughs> century. So Romashka gets the double. Oh, that's so sick. It was paint. Was paint. Yeah. Upswinger is just up for tilt because he... <laughs> he just wants people to bust. Did you man. notice? Yeah, every every time they dealt, the short stack doesn't bust. He he just emo he just like has some emoji. Yeah. It's been like three or four times now, I think. Pocket mm -hmm. sixes all in from our chip leader. Upswinger has pocket trees in the big blind, but he will let it go real quick. Yeah, that man just hates everyone. He just wants everyone to bust him. I guess that's kind of the name of the game. He could be in trouble here, though. Nope, he lets go of Ace Deuce. Juan Dominguez with Ace King. It is time to fight back Juan. He's just going to ship it in, I think. I think he should. I don't like three betting smaller because there's so many, there's three t micro stacks. And yep. you don't really want to induce someone to jam all on you with two tens, two jacks, or whatever, two nines. You just want to take it down. I'm with you. The Ray guy has a little over 10 big blinds. He's got pocket nines. He's going to get it all in. I feel like we entered all in or full territory while we have six players left. This is normally something that happens when we are like three or four handed. But now we are six handed and people are just jamming left, right, and center. Yeah. They're trying to just close it, close it up, you know. But to be honest, like we should have a lot of room. Of, there should be a lot of play. The only problem is the one guy's eight point seven million. If you just take a, like half his stack, give a million each guy. Like we've got a lot of poker to play, you know. But as play, he's just been uh -oh. crushing. Oh, call. Hey, screen. We Mark Radoya will make the call. Mark has been getting very unlucky so far tonight. Hopefully this stops here. <laughs> Not quite. He needs a jack and a jack only. 
He needs a jack. Oh my goodness. Can't even hit the jack with hearts anymore. It's a jack that's not a heart. Man, Mark Rodoya ran like absolute dog shit. Can we say that, Nanonoko? Dog shit, pretty much. Like the, the stinkiest yeah. dog shit you can think of. <laughs> Very smelly. Not just stinky, but also sticky. You know, it's just no bueno. <laughs> Unfortunately for Mark, he goes out in sixth place. He does walk away with $104,000. But I think we are all in agreement that he deserved a little bit more. Just got very, very unlucky. Yeah. Hey, Upswinger didn't emoji this time. He should have did a nice play or something, you know? Like, no, no, no. He got a page up. Still mean. <laughs> He's very shorty. He's got queen eight. I'm actually a bit surprised that the Ray guy... I mean, I guess queen six of spades is not too bad. Small blending is big blind. But yeah, this is like a very close one for Upswinger. But no one else is really close to him. I actually think I'm calling here, Nanonoko. Because if we fold, what are we waiting for? Who's supposed to bust? Yeah, I think you might be right to be now that I think about it, right? Because uh, if there was some guy with a million, I'd probably be folding for sure because, you know, they can easily yeah. get it in. But two million plus, my opponent jamming, could be good. Eight, nine suited, <laughs> queen ten, uh, not queen ten, sorry. But hmm. like, this is tough, tricky. Obviously, if we're a small you blind. Got a page uh, oh, oh, okay. I actually think he should have gone for it. I really think he should have gone for it. Because he already has a big blind committed too, you know? That's the thing. Well, well. Yeah. Don't know the answer, but well, we know he's going to jam here. He has to. Five and a half big blinds. Yeah, you got jam this. You just got to hope. Sometimes you just got to hope. Yeah. Hope Snap is calling, you're like, all right. Now I probably need help, right? Yeah. Uh, does flop trip jack, jack to avoid the spades? Needs to avoid spades and queens. That's uh, a lot of action. He never loses this. Oh, oh never goodness. mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. The deuce of spades on the river is going to do it. Upswing. I did really want that final pay jump. He was emojiing for it. And he does walk away with $132,000. And suddenly, Nanonoka, we are down to four. As the Ray guy is going to get it all in one more time. This time with King Bates. Yeah. Um. So, really, it's just... Ducks and Juan Dominguez are having the time of their lives, right? One guy with one big, who had one big line, one guy who just never lost a pot. And Ducks has been like, it was funny. I laughed because uh, you said this guy's running, running good, and he just Mark Rodeau just gets slammed two pair on the flop for Ducks. You know, like he hasn't lost any of those key all ins yet, has he? Nope. The Ray guy should jam eight here yeah? because Ducks has been raising a lot. Eight should be good, and he agrees with us. And Ducks been running real well. Nine point three million. Still has more chips than the rest of the table combined. And the Ray guy could be in a bit of trouble here. Because the Ray guy has oh. been creative with his gems. He has actually been jamming like pretty mediocre hands too. And oh my there god, go. he goes for it. And he got snap called. The Ray guy needs some help. Any kings in the deck, Nananoko? Kings or a jack? Just probably is. But my kids can't believe how... How many hands Ducks is going to win? Yeah, he wins another one. My God, he hasn't lost a single all in. Running hot. I don't hate it there by the Ray guy because there are a lot of hands that Ducks would open that he would absolutely fall to the gem. Unfortunately, this time he did have a screen there. So a bit unlucky for the man who came in second to this final table, but still a top four finish. Not bad, especially because he was really short earlier on. So it all comes down to Ducks, Romashka, and Juan Dominguez. Your pick tonight, my pick tonight, and the guy that should have won it in the past but has never won it before. And was down to one big blind when there were like 20 players left. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, you, you, your pick has got my pick out. Can I congratulate you? Now, I've been trying to congratulate you since the beginning of this final table. You don't want to accept it. What about now? How good do you feel? I, I, I'm having too much fun ignoring you, mate. It's actually way more <laughs> fun than engaging in this interaction that always ends up with Roddy in tears. And then I have to hear how I never pick a winner, blah, 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 blah. So no, I'm, <laughs> I'll just I'll let it slide, mate. All right, here we go. Flush draw, top pair. For the people who uh, may follow our picks and are a bit confused, didn't you guys pick David Jan and Nicholas Ostad? Like, those were our picks of the week for final table betting. 
you know, looking at the odds and how much you would have to bet to get X amount in return and what we think is a good bet. But at the beginning, before the first help, uh, first hand is dealt, we do always pick the guy who we think is going to win it. So not who we think is the best bet, but the one who we think is going to win it. Naranoko picked mm -hmm. Romashka today, and I picked Ducks. Yeah, it's funny because we didn't pick the superstars. We picked an unknown guy we've no, never seen before, and I picked a Russian producer per personality. And I mean, in our defense, the, best. the superstars had no chips, Nenonoko. It's pretty hard to win tournaments if you don't have any chips. Yeah, true. 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 Dox is also right, the one who knocked out David Yen, right? It was queens against tens or something. Uh, who did Dox Correct. not knock out? Yeah, he did. He did knock him out. Uh, queens versus tens, but I mean, like he knocked out like almost every single guy at this final table. Did he? Let me try and did think. He knock out Nicholas. How did Nicholas go out? Nicholas went down ace jack versus Wadoya's ace king. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he didn't knock him out. Who got Mister DL? Wait, what happened here? Flush? What? Come on, Roma. Oh, gosh. If he calls, he's out. All right. No shit. He's got the, the worst hand. Of, of course he calls, he's out, Roddy. Okay, he folds. Ooh, good fold, though. Sure. Romashka is playing all right, actually. Yeah. I think Romashka has played pretty good tonight. For the odds uh, that he was getting, like, I'm pretty happy of how he's playing. Like, uh, you know, yeah. he's... he's... It's pretty good, actually, for his odds. We are three minutes away from our second break, and we're suddenly only left with three players. That is a bit less than we normally have entering our second break. But in a weird way, it still felt like it was a long evening, especially because of, uh, I think, the first hour and the way that a lot of the hands were being played. There is still mm. potential for a pretty epic heads-up tonight, especially if Juan Dominguez wins a couple chips of ducks while we are still three-handed, or maybe Romashka. Can enter the heads up with five or six million chips. And I think anything is still possible. How's Ramash is at 1.6 million? This guy, you think he's going to make it to the heads up, Roddy? I mean, the guy yeah, with one big blind is still in. The spot. Yeah. Mate, you're going to make fun of me for saying that the guy that right now has 13 big blinds could make it to a heads up when the guy who had one big blind when there were 20 players left is now sitting on four million chips. And I don't know how many big blinds, but a lot. Yeah, of course you so can make it to heads. How up. many? How many x? How many x is it from forty k? Is that a hundred? Yes, it's a hundred x, right? Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's correct. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> like you're no, like, you're hmm, I'm not sure. Because ten, ten times four, ten times four k, or forty k is four hundred k. So a hundred times forty uh, k yeah. is four million. Hundred x the stack. <laughs> How often do you say that? And he's guaranteed, what, $210,000. Must be nice. And already his Ooh. best performance, by the way, in the high roller super millions. Like, I know he had a top three before, but top three is the best he's ever done because he's never been to a heads up. So it could be history right. tonight for Juan Dominguez. Ducks could go all in here. Romashka may give me all five cards with fours. What are you hoping for then, Nananoko? That he hits the set or not? <laughs> nice. Thank God he folded. Kind of <laughs> Juan Dominguez doesn't even want to limp anymore because he knows that Dux is going to put all the pressure on him. Obviously, this three handed setup doesn't oh, really yes. the guy with all the chips. Pocket this fives. should be it. Oh my god, five now you're going to get all five cards as well. Come on, A6 you against pocket fives. You hit so many sets today, Ramashka. Why not one more? Just one more. One more today. Oh, I think he will just be happy if he wins the hand, and he does win the hand. So, I mean, you win, Nanako. Your pick is still alive. Yeah. Okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. And now he is only 1.2 million chips behind Juan Dominguez, so he can absolutely make it to the heads up, just like I said. At this point, yeah, you're right. Oh, break! Right. Actually, he made it to the break. We went from seven to three players in this hour. I think we had a couple of very fun hands. I know there is still some pixelation going on. Those are some issues that we're currently having with vMix, but hopefully you guys are still having fun watching week 14, season two of the High Roller Super Millions. We'll see you guys in four minutes and 30 seconds.
After playing for 18 years, I learned that poker is very similar to life as you would never know what you run into. I think the key to my success was that I was able to adapt to everything. The opponents, the situation, the game flow, even the run of cards. After winning multiple major poker tournaments, including the Poker Triple Crown and two WSOP Gold Bracelets, I won over $14 million in live poker tournament. I am Elki. If you think I deserve it, please nominate me for the Poker Hall of Fame. Hi, I'm the new Daniel Negreanu, and I'm the old Daniel Negreanu. We both represent online poker sites. We both love Hold'em. I mean, we're basically the same person. Absolutely, man. I used to love watching you play, the way you would read people, call out their hands, and then, of course, call anyway. Oh, stop. I'm blushing. But old Daniel, man, I got to ask, man, what uh, what's up with this look you got going on here? You you tired or something? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of all these freaking beats I've been taking. It's freaking ridiculous. Look at this mother freaking hand. This mother is calling the freaking turn with this piece of freaking hand. Freaking absurd. Whatever, I don't even know why I'm so upset. I mean, bad beats, they're just part of the game, right? I mean, they don't really have to be. You see that? I took a bad beat, then GG Care took care of some of my losses. Hashtag, thanks GG. You think uh, maybe I could borrow that laptop and play a little while? No, definitely not. Just say GG to that site you're playing on over there. You just think you're so clever. Nope, just a good read. GG. Poker star. Elkie was waiting to come back to the final table. Radar holds things. Oh my God. Michael Otamo is the best. Welcome back to the High Roller Super Millions Week 14 Season 2, where we are down to three. A man from Finland called Dox has all the chippies, but he has a little less than he had before. So it's far from over. We've got pocket trees for Juan Dominguez in our opening hand. Let's see. I wonder if he's considering limp jamming this. It is 30 blinds, but... 
you should probably expect this raise so so often. So much hold equity. Limb calling is okay. I kind of like I like limb jamming to be honest, Rowdy. I just feel like the chip leader has so much incentive to raise a second place guy. I love this play. Well done. Very very well done here by Juan Dominguez. Excellent. Wins four hundred and twenty thousand chips and a bit extra without having to see a flop. A queen of diamonds for ducks. He is going to take the next one down, though. Yeah. Mate, if Juan Dominguez wins this, this has to be one of the most memorable tournament victories of his life. Maybe the most memorable victory. I know he's probably won plenty of tournaments because he's been going at it for a very long time. Malaka styles, but this would be one of the sickest ever. Mm-hmm. All right, so... Got pair on pair. You still have a lot of history just from all the red rebuys from early in the tournament, right? Uh, kind of funny card. Not bad for both. Wow, firing again. Let's keep control. Throw. Mm -hmm. Throw Mashka. That's what he does. I don't really see how Juan Dominguez can continue here. But he does what? continue. But Romashka wow. makes trip nines on the river. Man, what a crazy call there on the turn, though, by Juan. I mean, how bad of an image does Romashka have for Juan to call that turn? <laughs> like, he must think, my God. <laughs> is he going to call this river, too? Because this is, it feels like you're lighting money on fire, doesn't it? Yes, but I guess if we call the turn, then why are we, we folding the good. river? If we're good on the turn, we're good on the river. We know that much. <laughs> but he does okay, let go. So Romashka wins way more chips than we thought he was going to win. And he's got over 3 million now. Even closing in on 3.5. What, what is uh, Romashka's best finish in the high roll of Super Millions? Did he take second place second a long place. time ago? What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He got second for sure. And in that heads up, Something epic happened. He played so fast and I think he spewed some chips. <laughs> <laughs> it lasted three minutes, is what you're telling me. Yeah. Like, you know, like jam 50 blinds or something. I don't remember who he lost to. I feel like it was Isaac Hacks. I don't know why. I could be wrong. Haxon played as well this week. Limitless was in for a couple bullets. We have the Jack Deuce of Diamonds here of Juan Dominguez battling it out with King Deuce offsuit of Ducks. If we're calling here, I'm very confused. I'm like, <laughs> we're getting creative then. There were some back doors, but still, Jack Deuce. Don't know about that. Ooh, pocket fives again. Queen Jack, though. All in. Yep. <laughs> I oh, like it. Oh, man. Ducks is like, I have to get you back for one. <laughs> Well, ace king and ace nine. Oh, oh! I think this could be all in and call, right? Like Juan Dominguez disrespects Romashka so much, he might just think ace nine is a pretty good hand in this spot too. Twenty big blinds. Mm -hmm. I can see him jam this in, dude. I'm with you, Mister One I Big think Blind. That's what we're waiting oh. for. Wow! Just calls. Safe. It's okay. Yeah, yep. safe. I was like gonna say, Mister One Big Blind about to be one big blind again. <laughs> little more he does make the call though with ace nine and he has no heart let's go on the turn after romashka fires another bet real quick also a pretty adventurous call there on the flop i totally agree I, i'm not i don't really know why um yeah i i think he just really wants honed in on romashka and tries to take him out or something yeah I think he expects oh. Romashka to see bet a lot and then give up. Like bet one street and then give up. So then he feels that yeah. maybe he can steal it away at a later street. Ducks actually led this flop with queen three. Okay, he can't defend the big blind. Just trying to put pressure on ace highs. Called again by two. Good call by pocket tens on the turn there. Like it's a tough call to make. Mm -hmm. I think Ducks three is diamonds, scared, two right? sevens. Yep. How crazy is Ducks? 
Is he willing to go for all of it? He needs to put all of it in if he wants to steal the spot, I think. Oh my god, he and does. he does. Oh my god. <laughs> Romoshka <laughs> with a, a very, block. very difficult decision here on the river. Made a correct call on the turn. Let's wow. go with it on the river. Dox takes down a big one with queen high. Sick. This guy is sick, man. Like, he, he does some weird plays, but man, they always work. Like, oh, wow, nice flop, 86. But that was a sick yeah. play because he led into the pre flop raise of Queen 3 also and Jack 7 7, bet the turn, jammed the river. <laughs> Seriously, just amazing. I'm happy to see Romashka check again because I do feel that Juan is quite likely to bet this turn. So, excellent double check here by Romashka. I think a little raise, like raise it up to like 480, 510, something like that. I just call. No, wow, that's leads into the river. Juan Dominguez must be so tilted at this point. He's like, man, I can't win a hand against Rumashka. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what we said, Juan Dominguez, you're not allowed to complain, okay? You were down to one big blind a little while ago, so everything has been a bonus. Roddy, did you the production yeah. sense of something? Did you know Elki could be put into the Poker Hall of Fame? I did not know that. I did, I did not know that either, but I will absolutely yeah, vote for well. Elki. Yeah. I and you can LP apparently should vote be in the poker. There's a there's a link in the chat for the viewers. That's pretty cool. Like I can't believe Elki into the Hall, Poker Hall of Fame. Of course, you got to vote him in, but like, that's pretty cool, Roddy. Someone we both know. I'm voting right now. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. Because uh, it, it's a pretty big deal to get into the Poker Hall of Fame. You know, like, usually you're thinking like, the Doyle Brunson type people, right? But you know, Elke's pretty young. He knows he can get in there. And when he gets in there, he's going to say it's so sick. <laughs> so sick, I can't believe it. I still stand here by myself. I don't even need to be in a wheelchair. This is so sick. <laughs> All right, I have already voted. Alki is in. Alki honestly had a very big influence, I think, on the world of esports when it came to the bridge of poker and esports. I know so many people that followed Alki's journey that used to be Warcraft 3 players or Starcraft players in the beginning, and they always like. Elki was the first guy that was very known in esports to then succeed in poker in a big way. There were obviously many others that followed and there were many others that were somewhat involved in esports and then became big in poker. But I think Elki really was a trendsetter in uh, that regard. So I think for that reason alone, he absolutely deserves it. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, and even like he kind of like got me into multi tabling because like he was like a he was a pro, and he was known to play mm -hmm. all these tables. I I wasn't playing those tables. Like, oh, I want to be like that guy. That guy can play a bunch of tables. He kind of inspired me to play a bunch of tables. And yeah, he's and the, you're right. He's the and, catalyst. And a bunch of tables you played. Huh? <laughs> I did. I played a lot. Damn right. <laughs> Jack 8 of diamonds here versus King 4 of hearts. Juan Dominguez does have the best of it with a pair of jacks. Dux is just kind of hoping for a king here. Or maybe hoping that king high is good. We know it's not. I definitely think Alki deserves it. He's, uh, I think, one of the most known poker players in the last 20 years. Triple crown winner as well, right? True. Got a lot of trophies. Also, the owner of a cat. <laughs> I just two see cats. his. I just see the Instagram. They always talk, like he has two cats. Yeah, I think, they, I think they have two cats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two cats. They have a brown cat and a gray cat. Do you know that Elki? Me and Elki used to prop bet all the time, and then we would buy each other like uh, pretty expensive dinners. Like sometimes they're like five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars to one k, fancy dinners. And I'd win every single time. Like we do, like whatever the prop. It might be like, oh, we play uh, a best of five Hearthstone match or something. And he was way more experienced, but I would like luck box the shit out of them. Or like we would play like some sit and go. I don't know, whatever. Just I won every single time. I mean, yeah, he's like mega tilted about. It. If you ask him about, it, he'll know. 
Before the uh, pandemic started, who six eight of spades jamming? Romashka has got king eight of diamonds. Does not want to make the call, which is understandable because obviously he's very close in chips to the Juan Dominguez. But if he would have made the call there, Nananoka, he would have gotten it in in great shape. Before the pandemic, when we still had a lot of live events in the world of esports, whenever Alki would be there too, he'd always be like, "Oh, this match is gonna be so sick. You want to bet?" <laughs> I'm like. What do you want? He's like, oh, I don't know. What do you think is the favorite? And I was like, so you're asking me who the favorite is? And then, like, you want to bet on it? He's like, yeah, come on, man. So sick. It's going to be fun to watch it. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah, he, he livens up the place for sure. 6 3 with the three of clubs here for the Ducks. He is going to bet a little bit. And that is good enough to take this one down. I don't think it's annoying for Juan Dominguez that Romashka is still around. I think that Juan... Ooh, wow. Some real hands oh. here. Kings, Ace-9, and Ace-10. All oh in for a Vegas. Ace-10 will let it go, but Kings will not fold. Juan Dominguez, one once upon a time, had one big blind. And he's about to have all the big blinds. Oh, my oh. God. There is an Ace on the turn. Juan Dominguez needs to find Two a outs. King or a Jack, or it is all over. It is paint, though. And that's an ultimate tease as well, that it is paint, but it's not the right paint. Man, that's what a roller coaster of a hand. And we are down to heads up. It's Ducks versus Romashka. Roddy's pick versus Nano's pick. Juan Dominguez, though. Epic run from one big blind all the way into the top three, but very unlucky there. Actually, this still guy not allowed ducks. to win. Ducks? <laughs> yeah, not allowed to win, but Ducks has not lost an all-in yet, Roddy. And he's gotten in good, gotten in bad, and he's gotten in flips. He has 14 million yeah. chips. He, I know. There's no way Ramashka comes back from this. No way. Docs also makes a very casual trip here on the river with 8 4 against 10 4, has two outs, somehow drills it. Yeah, I think uh, the sun doesn't shine a whole lot in Finland. You know, their winters are long, the summers are short, but he is sun running at this point. Maybe he moves it to something i guess it's hard to play from there but yeah the man is having the time of his life yeah it's absolutely insane rowdy like i, I haven't seen, like i thought damo ran pretty hot in some in like some of these runs right but like no this guy's run hotter he hasn't lost a hand but playing nicholas good he's actually playing really run... good mm -hmm. nicholas has been running pretty hot too though from time to time True, true. But Ducks has got some moves, get it man. Like that, that Queen Three offsuit play, man. I still can't believe it. Where he got the Romashka Pocket to fold the dead. Hey, all five cards, baby. You've gotten so many cards today; it's unreal. My God. Not still no set, but I'm still winning in that department. We have a little side bet for the entire season. Which hand is going to make more sets? Pocket fours or pocket fives? I've got pocket fours. Nana's got pocket fives. I am in the lead. Three to two. <laughs> it's not been very exciting, but <laughs> yeah, we not. do get our it hopes seems, up. It's every very week. underwhelming. It's yeah, very underwhelming. I know. We need a different bet, mate. <laughs> you know? Roddy, if I pick pocket sixes, I'd be tied with my already in just one day alone because Romashka hit pocket sixes sets twice. Like, yep. pocket fives and fours are garbage, hot garbage. I, and I would have right. let you have sixes too. Like, I think I probably would have had yeah. the cutoff at like sevens or eights, but I would have let you have sixes if you wanted to have sixes. You know, should have picked sixes. But, uh, yeah, congrats on the point so far. Unless Romashka can turn it around. I've, I've got... Oh, wow. Nice. Wow. He did, a pair of threes he did call. get the uh, ducks to call here. Yeah, with the trace. So not bad. Romashka wins a little pot. King 9 versus Ace 4. This could be some fireworks. Not too many blinds on the side of Romashka. It's a little less than 20. 17 to 18 by the looks of it. King 9, Ace 4. He folds after raising. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's all right. Just one time. Pocket Eight. fours. You, okay, I was going to say, please don't put an ace king on the other side or something. My gosh. Oh, we've seen a lot of pocket fours today, but no sets. I wish I could have done some rabbit hunting. I'm sure that they hit a couple times, 100%. Hey, but um, remember how I told you in season one, Ramashka did all right? Like, I didn't know he ranked like 30, but he, 
season two, he's he's doing all right, right? He's got a second place. I don't know as a like a ninth or eighth, but like two final tables already is it's pretty good for a guy who doesn't play professionally, I would think. Yeah, but I actually do stand by what I said in the beginning of the show. I have the feeling that Romashka at this point is playing more poker than whatever he is supposed to be producing because he's playing a lot, Nelanoko. It's not like we see <laughs> Romashka play once a month. I feel like he's playing almost each and every single day. Well, I mean, he's like a you really know, good uh, producer. He's got the people do his work for him, you know? Last time I was able to play PLO before today, I actually played some as well in 2-5 uh, with... Yevgeny Kafelnikov, which was really fun for me. I told you this before, but back then I only saw him. This time I actually got to play with him for a while. He took some money of me. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it? Successful tennis player from the past still takes money from esports boy. I cannot believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you, you're going to get that Russian money, that uh, Anatoly money. That one's easy, right? Your condom, I, I, your long condom into the five card. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of afraid to be honest. Anatoly is running too good lately. It's the summer of Anatoly True. is never ending. I think I want to play him in winter, man. I'm going to Google, like, when does winter officially start? Because <laughs> I don't want to play Anatoly right now. All right. We'll have some fun. This is looking bad, though. Ramash goes down to like 10 blinds almost. But this one's going to boost him up a little. Mm hmm. It's been hovering around 2.2 to 2.5 ever since the heads up started. So not too big of a difference. Could win this one as well with Ace 10. Or wow, maybe not. I don't know why he didn't <laughs> raise. He, he's, he's playing a little too fast there. And now he's calling down. Uh, okay. We'll just see what happens. Well, I don't see Romashka betting. I think he hopes that Ace 10 high is good. We know it's not. He also knows it's not. Yeah, he's dropping to big blinds as we speak, and the blinds will go up again in eight hands. So something needs to turn around for our Russian producer real quick. I'm sure that the ladies are still smiling around him, though. I'm not worried about that. They're laughing. <laughs> of Getting, course. We're ordering champagne right now. <laughs> Celebrating. He's guaranteed 265k. You know, the funny thing is that Romashka came into this final table with, uh, how many chips did he come in? Two million chips, I think, right? Yeah, he came into the final table with 1.9. That's what he currently has. <laughs> but hey, back then we had nine players, now we've got two, so he's done all right. Duck's call, actually call, eliminated. Call, Here we go. You cannot call. call. Wow. There's no this way it's six great for like, Romashka. Literally, he's won too many all... He oh. hit a six. Six. He hit a six. Well, this is, this we is have six. some extra outs with that ace on the turn. We need a queen or a ten on the river. It's not a queen or a ten. It's unbelievable. The man cannot lose an all-in. Ducks is going to be your champion of the High Rollers Super Millions. Week 14, Season 2. And he walks away with $335,000. Romashka, excellent performance by him, though. Gets second place, walks away with a little over 260. The man cannot lose an all-in, Nelanoko. No, no, he just can't lose. Absolutely disgusting. He eliminated uh, almost every single player at the final table. He got in good, got in bad, got in flips. Won every single one. Literally, he did not lose one all-in today. And he was involved in a lot because he scalped everyone. He took all their chips. It's a pretty quick tournament, actually, now that we look at it. But uh, he also played great, though. I love the plays he was making post-flop. Pre-flop, he was a beast. And... Wait, ace nine into kings, thinks to ace when one ace is dead. Now wins the tournament, mm -hmm. king six into king queen. I'm sure there was others too. Like, it's absolutely. Dis and you pick them to win, Roddy? Like, did you boom switch them before you pick them, or do you have like some secret buttons? How the hell did he do it, Roddy? Oh, my God, well done. I don't know how many points you got, but you picked the winner again. Actually a decent amount, well, 4.1, so I got 4.1 points, closing the gap with you a little bit. Yeah, I was like, you know what, if it's an even number and I can finally pull a Nanonoko and just pick the chip leader. It, it felt that today, sure, there was always a chance that Nicholas Estet or David Jan was going to run it up. But let's not forget that this already happened two weeks ago, when Nicholas came in with a short stack, then ran it up all the way, was the chip leader after one hour of poker. It's impossible, even for someone who is as good as Nicholas, to run like that each and every single week. 
I felt like maybe it's time for the chip later to just take it because I didn't really know who else was supposed to win it. Uh, I think it was pretty fun. We had a lot of wild hands, but it was a bit weird because when we had, let's say, four, well, there's 15 million chips in play or a little bit more than that. At one point, he had over 9 or 10 million and we still had seven players left. Like, it, it just created a very weird dynamic where everyone was short besides Ducks and he could kind of just do whatever the hell he wanted. Yeah, he did do it or how he wanted, um, but uh, yeah. But I guess let's talk about some other guys out there. Juan Dominguez, game. He came. He had one big blind. He lost most of his chips. We said it all over today. He got third place. You said maybe today is his day. To be fair, even though he didn't get top two, I still think it was his day because he did turn in that one big blind into what 220k roughly, I think. Maybe 170. I can't but, remember. But still, no heads up for him. Still. Still winning though it's all right that's all right yeah of course no top three is good and he got it in real good let's not forget about that it was kings versus ace nine and ace ten ace ten did go into the muck but felt that it was uh, highly unlikely to lose that but the lesson of today is do not go all in with ducks when he makes it to the final table of a high roller super he's definitely playing again next week though right right now he's like all right what what's the starting time on sunday again He's like, I'm in it. These guys are not that good at all. This was one of the easiest victories in my life. It's way harder to win the $200 or $300 tournaments that I normally crush. <laughs> they called him a mid-stakes grinder, Roddy. A mid-stakes grinder. This Crusher. guy played like a professional. He was crushing, too. My God. Yeah, no. huh. They call him a mid-stakes crusher, not a grinder. Ah, okay. Well, crushing the Super Millions, too, apparently. Probably didn't enter it that many times, either. Uh, I took a picture of that. I can look it up. I mean, I know that Romashka was in for five bullets, but obviously still turned a big profit. Uh, Dox was in for two bullets, so it wasn't his first life, but a pretty decent investment on that second bullet, I'd say. Yeah, but uh, no, are you happy to be back, Rowdy? I know we I feel like we've been apart. We're doing one every like two weeks or so, but I think I'm, mm -hmm. it was a good episode. Yeah, and hopefully we can deliver again next week. Yeah, of course, last week we didn't have a high roller super millions because uh, nine days ago on the Sunday there were some server maintenance issues happening. No super millions to be played on Sunday. And if it doesn't happen on a Sunday, obviously we've got no final table for you guys on Tuesday. But even though the World Series of Poker is currently going on, we will still run the super millions. And apparently the people still want to play because even though it was a one million guaranteed, we had 170 entries. That's definitely a lot. Uh, so that's good to see. I'm already excited for the next one. I'm overall just excited to be following the World Series of Poker a bit. Uh, there's a lot of cool things still happening over at GG, of course. The Russian Cash Fridays with all the GG squad members. If you have any of us at your table when there is a cash drop, the cash drop will be doubled. So that's going to be fun. You know, Nana, we need to get you island so you can actually start playing some too. Because you've been talking a lot. But I, I want to see if you can still walk the walk. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, no, it's been great. And I guess uh, my last words are don't forget to vote for Elki for Poker Hall of Fame. I already got him in. I said, what? and then like reasoning why, I said, StarCraft legend, poker legend, made the bridge between esports and poker a lot smaller. I think he inspired a lot of people to follow a different journey, a different dream after they gave up on the video dream. So video game dream that is anyway that is going to do it for us we do apologize about a couple of the technical hiccups we had they should be resolved next week so i wish you guys all the best and all the fun playing at gg play responsible but have a good time and hopefully we'll see you again next week same time same place thanks for watching goodbye and congrats to ducks <laughs>